right, starting streaming. Let's see what we got here. All right, all right, I see uh, the ads going. Let's uh, do this, guys. Lights, camera, action. What's going on, guys? And welcome to yet another episode of the Xbox Roundtable podcast. This is show number 306, your place for Xbox talk and all kinds of other gaming uh, discussions on Sunday nights. I am Invader, your overseer of all things uh, podcast goodness for this evening. Uh... I'm very happy to be with you here tonight, and uh, yeah, lots to uh, go over, lots to discuss. Um, we had a few interesting games drop this past week, such as Lightyear Frontier, Dragon's Dogma 2. We will certainly touch on those. As well, we plan to go over the future games show with uh, some of our highlights, plus uh, some controversy over a certain indie title suspending its uh, Xbox release over... What, was my, what am I going to say? Cloudy conditions? Something like that. We'll uh, get into that and possibly more. First, though, uh, let me uh, go over to the crew and, and just introduce everyone, starting off with the Crusader. Hey, Crusader, how you doing? Good. Uh, played Mafia 3 this week and finished it. This might be the most gamer score I've earned in a month. I'd have to go check all my records, but I'm at, like, 4,000 so far this month. And, like, I don't hmm. play games to, like play bad games to get achievements in i just play games and earn the achievements as i play them and i i, I don't often 100 percent games unless it's easy or i really love the game mm -hmm. and so like i have 4k so far this month which is kind of nuts considering it's only the 24th and i still have like a week left damn um and i yeah and i started jedi survivor today which is excellent hmm interesting yeah it's always interesting i remember uh back in the day people just again they uh if they were really going for the the chibo scores they would just play the games didn't matter the quality i remember there was that one avatar game where you could get like a thousand gamer score in like what five they, minutes something like that yeah they they purposely <laughs> they purposely put it on sale every like month <laughs> i think i own it oh damn but like mm -hmm. yeah i know exactly i know exactly what you're talking yeah, everyone. There's, there's, a, there's a bunch of games on the store that are like that. Yeah, and they're purposely um, they're like they're not yeah. marketed like that, but it's like you know on like the the forums and uh, you yeah. know they're definitely talked about for sure. Um, yeah, there's a few games like that. I remember seeing like all again the Barbie games and the Hannah Montana so on and so forth. I'm like, wow, you know, looking through some achievement lists, it's like, damn, dude, you're like 35 years old with uh, that, and I know you don't got a daughter, so. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. But... I'm on my longest Xbox achievement streak as well, which mm -hmm. I believe is at 37 days now. I have one achievement a day for 37 days. Damn. Oh. Damn. Yeah, I'm going to see how long I can keep that going without accidentally screwing it up. No, that's cool. No, it's, uh, you know, something. It's something, man. But uh, good stuff, good stuff. Uh, next, as I saw him mosey on in, uh, General MLD. How you been, man? Hey, I've been a good week. Uh, Gaming-wise, I've actually been playing a couple Game Pass drops. Uh, Evil West, that game is a lot of fun. Feels like an old 360-style, uh, you know, third-person action game. And um, well, I also just started the uh, the Quarry, one mm -hmm. of those uh, choose your own uh, endings kind of thing with the with uh, you know teenagers at a, at a campsite at night and things are trying to kill them. Yeah, I got both great drops. I'm um, trying to finish both of them before uh, Diablo 4. So, yeah, that that's my gaming right now. Uh, too many games, not, not enough time. Yeah, the funny part is I have Evil West uh, still in wrapping paper, and I did start the quarry, but, like, I put it off on the back burner list. So two of those games that I have in my collection uh, have just now dropped into Game Pass, so... You know, I mean, they're good, you know, they're good games, or at least, again, Evil West looks pretty cool. I know a couple of guys on the uh, the show would probably uh, highly suggest it, but, um, yeah, I just, oh, yeah. you know, no, it's pretty good to see, uh, again, uh, quality there coming into Game Pass, and, yeah, I might uh, just have to download them and give them a shot. 
Uh, let's see. Moving on down the list here. Centurion. Hey, Centurion. Uh, how's things at your end? Uh, been playing anything this weekend? I've been playing a little bit here and there. It's been a crazy week, we can say that. But mm. I found myself just kind of playing too many rounds of uh, Star Wars Battlefront. The the one that, like, I don't even... Battlefront 2, the one from, like, 2017 that everybody, like, like pay mm-hmm. to win debacles and crap like that but i just enjoy playing the co-op on that so mm-hmm. i ended up playing like a lot of hours of that this week um just for some nostalgia but also kind of played a little bit of uh the one we'll talk about the Lightyear frontier um i played the demo until it wouldn't let me play anymore but um now i'm starting to get back into playing the actual the actual real game because I guess none of your stuff carried over from the demo. That kind of sucked. But, Mm. um, um, but anyways, and then I've also been, uh, playing with, uh, Dragon's Dogma too. A close friend of mine got it for me and, uh, I've just been kind of playing around with that and definitely, uh, I'm enjoying it. Oh, well, I'm happy to hear that very, very much so in fact. So, uh, yeah, no, it's always, you know, good to have those kinds of games, too. Uh, and again, it's a nice variety, right? I mean, we'll get into the games uh, very, very soon. But, uh, you know, again, just uh, something to keep your mind occupied, something a little more low-key, and then you got the other one that's action-packed. So, uh, yeah, nice to have some variety this week, to say the least. Uh, moving on down, who do we got here? Grimes! Grimes, what's up, brother? What's up, what's up? Happy Sunday to everyone. Uh, been chilling. Uh, I try to play no more heroes this week, but uh, I didn't like it to be honest. Uh, it's poorly optimized. Uh, some weird controls. Um, it hmm. also doesn't have a controller controller layout in the uh, menu option. So if you for, if you forget the buttons, uh, tough luck. And it's got some long. Uh, loading screens like some of them can go f- up to 45 seconds to 60 and you know like on the ssd th- th- that's unacceptable so i had a n- not such a good experience with it which and game just like, um no more heroes okay yeah and you know, some of the textures take a while to load up as well so it's just they need to fix that and just like, you know, like MOD, I also just installed the Quarry. Uh, I haven't played it yet, but uh, I do plan on playing it bef- just before Diablo 4. Super massive, really do know how to make 90s horror flicks. Um, I also put in uh, two hours into that small game we're going to touch on later. Re- uh, so far, I'm happy with it. And... Uh, just before uh, I move on, I wanted to ask you guys, I, and I don't know if you, any of you guys know this, but why can't you pre-install to, uh, some games that are coming to Game Pass that are already on the Xbox Store? Uh, I wanted to install Diablo 4 early, so come the 27th or the 28th, I can play it as soon as possible, but nope. You cannot install it yet. You should be able to using the Xbox app. Okay. Like on like the mobile app. Um, Because you can you can preload you can download any game that is on the Xbox Store on the mobile app whether you own it or not if it is fully listed on the store. See, I I remember like Xbox talking about it, but I didn't know it was only. I I think there there's definitely a like it's it's been a feature for about 18 months now yeah and I, I thought there was a way to do it on the console but i'm not 100 percent sure I, I, i'll look into that for you okay thanks i mean yeah it's like who wouldn't i mean it's coming this week so who wouldn't want to ins- pre-install it before it drops just makes no sense not to have it mm-hmm. no no you're right absolutely absolutely my man we'll have to find that out for you and uh, rounding out the crew, the crew tonight, we got Dots, Mr. Dots RTS. How you been? I've been doing good. I've been doing good. Um, I've been kind of on a uh, 
um, video game news watch and also a heavy Warhammer fix this last week. Um, been playing a mixture of um, Warp Forge, which is kind of like their Hearthstone equivalent. I've been playing uh, Gothic Armada, which is the space RTS game that I absolutely adore. One, it's still one of the best out on the market RTS wise. Um, been like keeping up to date on Adepticon, which is going on right now, showing off the uh, Age of Sigmar stuff. They got more Skaven models coming out. Uh, 40k stuff. They got some brand new Chaos Space Marine models, which which look beautiful. Um, so a lot of hype on the in the Warhammer front. But yeah, no. Um, otherwise just chilling and uh, having a good time. Nice, nice. Yeah, I did see the uh, was it the new Chaos Lords? If I'm not mistaken, they looked pretty it, cool. Yeah, it's it's uh, what is it? It's there's two new Chaos Lords, uh, and there's like two Battle Force boxes. So they're kind of giving a, a refresh to the like the the base ground troop models for Chaos mm-hmm. Space Marines, and t- including giving them some nice new Lord models, which the Lord models look great. But mm-hmm. oh, and I've, <laughs> you, you'd get a kick out of this. I, I um I've been getting a little bit of model envy because like I hate the lore for the Tau, but their <laughs> models are still so cool. I mean, I love mechs. Mechs are great. Mm-hmm. I could not play Tau because I don't like the lore, but I would really want to paint one of their models. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've been having fun uh, doing a bit of that. I took a little, little bit of a break right now, but, uh, you know, maybe middle of April, uh, get back into it. And, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, I definitely love putting together the mechs, that's for sure. I love my crisis I, suits. I, I'm, I'm still finishing up my Leviathan box. I'm almost done with the Space Marines. Nice. And then I can go back to working on Necrons. The closest thing I got to a mech is a Dreadnought, so maybe I'll buy a knight. Maybe I'll cave and buy a knight one of these days. That's an investment, but it's a fun one. Well, MLD <laughs> MLD has a knight, so... <laughs> I do. It looks you, awesome. You'll have to send me a picture. I will. Uh, it's being painted uh, lately, like uh, except Black Templars. So I'm giving it the Black Templar stripes, you know. So okay. it's, oh, it's looking so good. Yeah, I'll I, do that. I'm I'm a fan of that. Uh, I definitely want to do that with my uh, um, Space Marines. I know technically knights are like their own faction, so they don't yes. go off of the Space Marine colors. But it's our it's our model. Screw that. We paint it whatever <laughs> colors we want. It's my head cannon. <laughs> it makes sense in my head. Oh yeah, true. <laughs> Contracted them out. Yeah, yeah, no, that works. Blood Ravens, they would have stolen it and make, and that would have made lore sense. Oh, I know what you're, <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. But uh, yeah, guys, Shockley won't be making it tonight, from the looks of it. Uh, we shall see. But uh, yeah, this is the crew tonight. And naturally, before we get uh, beginning, please share with the show, as I'd love to have more wonderful wonderful people here with us enjoying the show as well smack that like button guys it uh, certainly helps us all right guys i i'm not going to uh delay here let's get right into it uh, gentlemen let's start things off talking about some new game releases uh, we have what the action rpg dragon's dogma 2 bringing fire breathing fun the past week along with a little indie title called lightyear frontier it's in game preview as we've been uh, just chatting about but still seems to uh, provide like a new adventure for players to just check out it's uh i've spent some time with it it's pretty relaxing i have the uh, gameplay on right now um actually i've been really enjoying it to be honest and i know a few guys on the panel have checked out these titles but uh you know i'll go to centurion first since he's been dabbling with both and i would really love to hear his perspective uh so sent please why don't you just give us your thoughts on these new titles uh, start off with with whichever one you'd like to first um <clears throat> well uh, that's a good question uh we'll just start with Lightyear frontier just because i did that i, I dabbled with that one first um so lightyear frontier they did have a demo for it um so i played until i pretty much hit the walls and the thing pretty much so i want to say i probably got like two three hours into it because i was just building and building and building and then finally i started trying to just explore the land and then that's when i realized that a lot of it was gated off um and eventually it was just like hey you need to buy the game so, um, <clears throat> or get it in Game Pass, essentially. 
but I've played a game for the longest time called Farming Together. It's like one of those little relaxing, uh, like vices where you just can fire it up and just play it, and there's no, it, there's no right or wrong way to play it. You just play it at your own pace, and that's what it feels like with uh, Lightyear Frontier. Um, is you just obviously go around and start exploring, harvesting stuff, and once you start figuring out how to build your your settlement, like your camp and the things to uh, progress yourself into getting more and more stuff. That's, I guess that's where the reward is, is you collect materials, you unlock cra um, blueprints to craft objects, you craft these objects, you get new materials from these objects, and it opens up even more stuff to craft. And so, and there's a little bit of a, I'm wanting to say some kind of a storyline, like as you um restart restoring the the regions of the world that you are that mm -hmm. you're on you start unlocking some kind of temple that um i could not tell you anything about other than uh it has all these <clears throat> lights on the door and as you clean up regions and stuff like that the lights start coming on but yeah like how you said it was relaxing i mean it's just one of those things where you can come and go as you please um there's always something to do in the game um and it's one of those instances where i don't know like it it's kind of like interesting because pal world didn't really hit with me but that was just because i i guess it didn't the game loop wasn't what i was looking for but with Lightyear frontier um definitely the game loop is there for me um and I, I don't know who the hell doesn't want to go running around in a mech and play farmer. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that was the thing, because when you think about it, too, at first, it's just like, man, I just really want to take that mech, like attack, you know, attach a rocket launcher to it and just blow up stuff. But then it's just like, oh, this is kind of, uh, you know, a neat Says the towel player. <laughs> yeah. I do, I do. Uh, but, you know, it's just kind of nice to, like, you know, I, as I got into it, I'm like, oh, okay, this is a kind of a, you know, a different take. And I was like, oh, okay, like, it's kind of cool. And there's no combat in the game either, right? You're not, like, fending off anybody. So, no, there is. Oh. Um, in the demo, I ran into a situation where my camp was invaded by something that was polluting it. Oh, okay. and you had to break out the water cannon and basically start fighting them off with the with the water cannon. So I actually did run into a little bit of a scenario where you had to start uh, defending your camp because they were basically wrecking your crops. Um, so I haven't had anything above and beyond that happen, but something did happen that was a little bit combat esque, I guess you could say, like you know. So don't like don't think it like that it can't happen. I was shocked because I woke up, you know, you crawl out of your tent mm -hmm. and all these things are in the sky and you're like, what the hell is going on? And then you start seeing them wrecking your crops and damaging your equipment and you're like, oh, OK, well, this is bad. Um, and the only thing I could remember was I have this water cannon, so I'm fighting them off with a water cannon. <laughs> <laughs> now, is it those like because I, I have seen something. Is it like those floating things? Or yes, no. they're pink. They're pink floating objects. Okay, okay, that's what I thought. Okay. But they do, but they do show up and they start dropping pollute. Like, uh, obviously, there's a message in the game. I guess I'm not trying to be like spoiler here, but yeah, obviously these pink things are creating pollution, mm -hmm. and part of your, part of your like kind of like, uh, symbiotic relationship with you living on this planet is obviously to clean up the pollution that they're creating. Um, and that involves obviously the water cannon and, um, it's basically like this pink slime that's everywhere. Mm -hmm. Makes you feel a little bit like Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's almost like, um, like you're cleaning up stuff. I almost want to compare it to like those, uh, you know, those power wash simulator games as well, where you're just like washing, uh, stuff yes. off of everything. Yes, so. so you have your five pr basic you have five basic attachments for your mech. Obviously the water cannon. Now the water cannon is not like limited supply of water. You literally have to find a body of water and you have to get out your vacuum attachment and suck up the water to load the water cannon. And then you use the water cannon to obviously wash things down, water your crops, stuff like that. The va the vacuum cannon is um for you to collect and har for you to collect and harvest seeds 
and other stuff from plants without destroying them because you have um the main attachment which is the spike hammer um which is it's like a jackhammer with a chainsaw on it and you can either jackhammer rocks with it and or you can start going up the trees and just chopping them down by slashing it sideways and then you have the sprout cannon which is for planting trees and bigger plants and then the seed cannon which is for planting small plants and stuff like that um and it, this is where the rpg comes into it is you do have a station that you can craft to upgrade your mech uh change out attachments like on the demo before it cut me off uh i had already built it into looking like a giant walking hot rod um and then you start uh, unlocking new materials and you use these materials to upgrade your like the 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 jackhammer attachment um the saw hammer you can't just like chop up everything in your way you will come across objects that it won't bring down and it says you you need to have a higher level you know essentially a higher level tool to do that and that's where you get into your your mech upgrade station and you start upgrading your attachments and it just goes from there. Like I haven't been able to fully 100% explore everything you can do when it comes to upgrading it, but that's why I say there's always something to aim for when it comes to unlocking something or building something new. So that's where that was the that that I guess for those that are just looking for a mellow game to check out in Game Pass, that would be the one that I would suggest right now. Mm -hmm. um, now, obviously, for those that want to have a game to buy. Um, that are into fantasy RPGs. Um, I would definitely say Dragon Dogma 2. I was going to probably get it day one anyways, but my my bro basically beat me to the punch, and I it was deposited into my Xbox account while I was at work, so I came home to the game. Um, but that's where, I mean, dude, like... Being able to craft your character, like for starters, we all remember the like her, earlier in the week or whatnot, the the character crafting and building your avatar in that game. I, I will definitely say it was a lot of fun seeing something that detailed. You know, you spend like a half hour, forty five minutes just building your own character, um, and then you start getting into the story of it. Um, the combat is not overly complicated, which is something that I was really excited about because in some RPGs they they overcomplicate uh, crafting, I mean, not crafting, combat, uh, but that's where also with ma uh, mages, like, I'm used to it with, like, Elder Scrolls Online, like, if you have, or Elder Scrolls in general, if you have, like, a, a certain spell that's really destructive, you can cast it very easily. In this game, it, it like, they flat out warn you as a mage, like, if you if you get the more powerful your spell spells are the longer it takes for them to cast and so therefore you got to have a good support basically a support group around you to defend your mage to make sure they can actually cast these spells and that's where you get into the pawns um and the pawns actually that's what kind of made me really fall in love with this game is a uh, um at least for me my main pawn was crafted uh towards somebody important to me that's not around anymore so i thought i would just build a pawn for them um and i i thought it was funny that you can actually bring in other pawns from your friends list and they'll actually tell you about what your friends are up to like they warn you if you spend too much time at the brothel your actual pawns will tell your friends that you spend too much time at a brothel um but it was just to me i've only got about three four hours in the game but I think it's really fun when you're in, done in a combat scenario, you'll start high-fiving your group members, and I just feel like there's a camaraderie between your group members that uh, you norm you don't normally see in some RPGs. Like, once the battle's over, everybody's like, oh, well, that was fun, let's go back to exploring. Uh, there's no, like, chemistry between the group, but this one, they actually do try to build the chemistry. Um, now, I guess where I'm going with this, too, though, is... We've heard a lot of people, and I just want to touch on it, talk about microtransactions in this game. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to be absolutely... They... Apparently, you have to go looking hard for them. Maybe it's easier to find them on Steam. Mm. But, that be, but that being said, um, I have another friend that I'm very close to that absolutely, abhorrently hates microtransactions, like, with a passion. Like, me and him can have debates all day long on stuff. And he has personally said 
he doesn't understand why people are saying what they are about Dragon's Dogma 2 because he loves the hell out of the game. And he cannot... He's even said, he's like, dude, I don't even... the, the my, It's not like where other games you've played where you get a little pop-up that's like, hey, buy this and make the game simpler or do whatever. There's like nothing that makes anything intrusive. I There's not even... I can't even say right now that I've seen anything to go see a store for the game other than looking on the back pages of the Xbox store and seeing what microtransactions are available. Um, and even then, it's just some of the microtransactions are buying consumable items that you can find in game. Yes, you can spend your money to get some of these items, but like it's kind of like Elder Scrolls Online with Soul Gems. So the whole game revolves around soul gems. Yes, I can go into the crown store right now and buy crates and crates of soul gems. Um, and that's like I'm gonna be upfront. Unless you, I hate like unless you are like I'm I'm confused on who would spend their money on soul gems because I feel like I am like overflowing with them in the game and I find them naturally. So uh, to me, I'm just like, I okay, they're there for somebody that just apparently has. Uh, apparently five minutes or something. I don't know what some, like, I'm just saying, like, to me, the microtransaction thing um, might be, at least for me, in my opinion, a little overblown. But I'm pretty sure everybody has their own their own input on that situation. But for me, they're not there. Like, I, I have not found anything that has made me feel like I got to get my wallet out because uh, the game is just too damn hard. I mean... I have not found or have not gotten into a situation where I just feel like I got to get out my wallet to somehow give myself some kind of an advantage. Mm hmm. I mean, I so guess sent, oh, I no, DM'd you what the Steam store looks like when you go to buy the game. Well, I'm pretty sure it's there. And so, my buddy's playing on Steam, too, though. And so when when you go to buy the game, you're confronted with a wall of them, which is where a lot of it comes from. I'll talk more about it in my part, but I did want to send you an image to just show well, you what the store looks like. This, this is where my whole stipulation is on microtransactions. Mm -hmm. If anybody here went out right now and started a landscaping company in this chat listening, if you go out and start a landscaping company and you give somebody a price to mow the damn lawn and they start chewing on your ass about not trimming the tree too – no, you you paid me to mow the lawn. You want me to trim the tree? That's an extra that's an extra charge. Everybody has a side hustle. I do side hustles. I work on the side for people and I charge them. My time mm -hmm. is not free. Mm -hmm. I am so sorry for people that cannot accept the fucking fact of life that the w world revolves around money. Does it suck? Yes. Am I a huge fan of Gene Roddenberry with Star Trek on the idea of the money should not money should not be the central focus of the human race? I fully agree. But I also have no problem grasping onto reality that that's not mm -hmm. how it works. And just because you paid for a base game does not mean that you get the all the other trimmings on top of it that come with that game. I will not fault developers for having a side hustle. Um, and that's where everybody then what goes into the weeds of like, oh, it's the publisher forcing them to do this and this, that, mm -hmm. and the other. I'm going to just say it like this. If somebody in here right now was to like, you know, like, well, there's a, there's a graphic designer in this group right now. If I was to reach out to him right now and have him craft me a, a gamer pick or something like that for me to use on my channel, I would pay him for his time. I do not think for one second anybody owes me a damn ounce of anything for free, even if we're friends. And that is where... Uh, but that's where if somebody small like us has a side hustle, oh my God, he's out there. He's getting it. He's on the grind. He's going to make something of himself. But fast forward, if like now what happens if like 20 years from now, I have a majorly successful business. I'm making millions of dollars. All of a sudden, I'm just a greedy asshole. I I'm greedy. I have way too much money. I shouldn't be having to do this, that, and the other to continue making more and more money. And that's where I'm just saying like I think it's funny that – if, if it's like mm. kind of like a catch 22 a double standard of you know it's okay for somebody that doesn't have a whole lot of money to have some kind of convoluted system to create more money but if somebody that has money does the same thing they're bad and I just, that's where i can't live like that oh no and I, I i get what you're saying i guess what uh like again what i was curious about 
was, um, again, the game just, it doesn't seem as pernicious to you that, again, um, like, you can play it fine, no problem, earning things, and it just seems, like, natural, like, how things are coming to you, and, uh, progression seems pretty good overall. I want to say progression's good. I have not, dude, I'm level, I'm, like, for only playing four hours, I'm already level seven, I have not, I'm gonna tell you right now, Suicide Squad is harder than this game. Hmm. Interesting. All right. All right, that's fair. Um, it, yeah, like that's an interesting comparison too between uh, two uh, very recent games. Uh, all right, all right. Uh, yeah, again, thank you very I, much. Like, I, I I, one one small question. I would be curious on what your definition of harder is, because I unfortunately, like from my mentality, and I'm, and Crusader can agree with me on this. Like for example, when Destiny Two comes out with harder content, and it's like, oh. The enemies just have more health, or they're just the exact same enemies, but they're doing a lot more damage than what you're used to. Versus, oh, there's mechanics that add more challenge to the game. Kind of. Uh, see that I, for me, it's a mechanics thing. At least when it comes to Suicide Squad, where, uh, like, don't get me wrong, the enemies do have like depending on where you're at in the Suicide Squad. Uh, I'm gonna tell you right now, I felt like I had an easier time whooping on the justice league than i do the actual main protagonist of the game and once you get to the main protagonist of the game they're like i mean i don't want to start spoiling stuff but i mean it, it it starts going into a realm where you start having to do these missions to get a certain currency to actually be able to go to the end fight and before and once you un have enough currency to go to the end fight for that particular uh, protagonist once you get to their world now you have to do these side missions before you can even fight them and you have 30 minutes to complete these side missions and the enemies are a lot harder and that's where the mechanics of the game start getting involved with it because uh, I'll say it right now for starters the 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 NPCs up res like resing you they they're completely dumb as a box of rocks I mean they'll they'll stare at you while you're on the ground begging to be revived. So Halo Five. <laughs> Pretty. Much. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, but that's where that's where I'm gonna start getting with a group of friends mm. and we're actually gonna start getting in a team of four to do this. Because it's now gotten to that point where I can't rely on the NPCs to, like, revive you. But that's, I mean, the game mechanic is if you shoot them and you, like, start trying to lay waste to everything, you have no way of recharging your shields. You have to get enemies into a point where you can harvest them for shield, kind of like Doom. Uh, like how you had to like melee, like you could shoot up enemies all day long in Doom, but if you weren't meleeing Doom, uh, meleeing enemies, they weren't dropping health. And it's the same instance here. You could shoot them up all day long and just devastate, but they're not dropping what you need as health. And that's where you got to start playing the game in a certain manner to be able to balance, you know, getting health, but also at the same time keeping up with the difficulty level of the game. And that's where I just feel like you could see the built-in grind that rocksteady built into suicide squad by the mechanics and the systems that are there where i just really do feel at least right now with what i've had in dragon's dogma is i have not had an instance where i felt like dude when i played um lies of p dude the like the first enemies you encounter in that game you better be you better learn how to parry and block and actually play a game like a souls like game very quickly Otherwise, you're just going to get your ass whooped. Um, and that's where I just don't feel that way with Dragon's Dogma 2. Like, I, I haven't felt like I'm being held back by anything. Um, and, like, one of the, the one of the things you can buy in the store is a camping, is a, uh, is a camp set that um, you can buy in the store. And they call it the Explorer's Camping Set. That one weighs five pounds. The actual camping set in the game weighs seven pounds. So for three dollars, you can make your camp set weigh two two pounds less. Yes, you could probably say that's a a mechanic to basically you know like oh so you got to pay it's a little bit more of a grind or you know you got to manage your weight capacity even more with certain objects because you can pay to have them weigh less. But at the same time, I have to laugh that 
I, I, I actually used the camp set just to use it. I felt that using the camp set was completely unnecessary, but that's because maybe I'm not in the point in the game where I'd like, I need to absolutely use it. Um, and that's, but at least that's why I'm just saying, I'm only basing it on four hours of time in the game, but I haven't felt anything that basically made me feel like it, it's like twisted into making me want to spend money. Like I don't have any pop-ups that are just like, Hey, to XP faster paid for this. You know, I haven't had anything for like that happen. There has been games I have seen that happen, but mm -hmm. not here. Okay. All right. That's pretty Sorry, not cool. trying to ramble on it. No, you're not rambling. I know, actually, that's some really great information. It's good to know, because a lot of people have been curious about Dragon's Dogma. And, again, that's why we, uh, you know, we have these conversations and bring them up. Because, again, everybody's uh, wanting to know, because they see some of this stuff pop up on the internet, on social media. It's like, huh, you know, should I, uh, you know, should I be interested in this game? It's like, well, you know, it's not that big of a deal. And that's where I just don't want it to go down the road. Because, to me, in my world, not all microtransactions are the same there is microtransactions that are that work and there's microtransactions that are abhorrently don't have a place in the industry like if you guys want to know i do i'm planning to put this video up here soon for shits and giggles i bought 40 crown i had enough currency saved up in my my elder scrolls account to buy 40 crown crates um let's let's just say that was a lot of that was a lot of saved up currency for a lot of months of not using my membership but out, the, the the rule of crown crates is for every 10 that you're open you're supposed to get something good i opened 40 and i didn't get shit so Damn. i do not i don't like loot boxes and this is coming out of elder scrolls online and this power is one of, of gotcha. my uh, uh, what'd you say the power of gotcha pretty much and i just wanted to see i wanted because i went on you know it's like they they do publish their drop rates and the odds mm -hmm. of you getting an object and i was like you know what i'm a numbers guy and i'm gonna play the odds to see if it's really true or not and obviously in my opinion i just feel that maybe because of crown crates people are not spending as much money as they could be as if they were just normal microtransactions. Like, I'm mm -hmm. just going to say, I could see something right now in the Crown Crate store and be like, well, I'm not going to get that object because I'm not going to spend a stupid amount of money in trying to getting that one object. But if you were to say, hey, you could get this object right now if you gave us 20 bucks, it'd be like, okay, fine, let me pay you 20 bucks just so I'm done and over with it and I can get the object that I want. And that's where I don't like loot boxes because loot boxes, I just feel, are just really built for people that want to turn it into a slot machine. Mm -hmm. And, dude, I am not I, – I, I, I don't hang out at casinos and I don't bring them into my home. <laughs> <laughs> hey, fair enough. I, I feel the same way generally about them as well. Um, let's see. I want to get some more perspectives here, but thank you very much for uh, sharing uh, your thoughts on those games, Centurion. Really appreciate that. Uh, Dots, Dots, uh, did you get a chance to check out these games at all? Uh, are you interested in them? Got any thoughts? Well, on the first game, I really want to say I, I'm impressed Respawn did so good on Titanfall 3. Um, I mean, watching <laughs> the gameplay on the stream is fantastic. I think they outdid themselves. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I actually hate you. Why do I let you in my home? Because <laughs> you, your mother lets me. You know, all the wall me. running. <laughs> well, um. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Now I got prep for Titanfall stuck in my head. Uh, oh man. So, <laughs> so uh, I've not touched Lightyear Frontier yet. I. It looks. It looks. I mean. This is honestly the first real gameplay I'm watching is what's actually on the stream right now. And I, it looks great. I like it. I kind of like the uh, the Mario Sunshine-esque uh, water gun mechanic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's that's what I... that When you were talking about the water mechanics, I, when uh, Scent was talking about it, I was like, oh, yeah, this sounds like freaking Mario Sunshine, honestly. Um, is... But no. It, is it, it co-op? I don't know. Yes, there, so. there, no, there's no, there's a multiplayer. Oh, there is. Yeah. Okay. There's, there's, you go exploring. You can invite people. It's kind of like Pal World, where you know how you have your world that you can invite right. your okay. into your. It's the same thing, because you gotta you gotta name your world, and I, essentially at that point, it's like a space in the server. Well, yeah, but with Pal World, you can actually make it a server rather than a single like a host world. If you can with this too, I'll, I'll look at it. Maybe on Steam. This. I don't know about on Xbox. That's for sure. Is it is it cross play yet or no? 
That I also can't. That I okay. can't answer. Either. Well, okay. Well, d d those details aside, it looks great. Uh, I actually had a bit of interest in it when it was first announced, but I doubt I will have good time convincing my girlfriend to play it with me because she is not a mech person like I am. So, <laughs> besides the point of you know Titanfall three looking gorgeous as ever, um, no. So, Lightfall Frontier, I'll give I'll give it a shot in the future. Cross play. I don't know about hosting servers. Okay. Um and then uh Dragon's Dogma. I I I I obviously most of my news has been the negative stuff about the microtransactions. I understand this is kind of Capcom's like gist now is having a game and then at least on the Steam pages you see the rows of DLC and like with maybe like the exception of Monster Hunter, I don't think Monster Hunter has the, like all their stuff is like uh, cosmetic to my knowledge. Um, but then again, with how Monster Hunter's gameplay loop is, it, it, that's kind of the gist. It's not you can't really buy uh, the rare materials you need and whatnot. Um, but uh, like I played Devil May Cry Five, and you can buy the currency, but there's like one of the weapons you unlock in the game is literally like a currency maker like your whole the whole shtick with that weapon is if you run really good combos you just make a crap ton of currency so like you know i've i haven't played dragon dragon's dogma one uh, i know nothing about the honestly i don't really know much about the games and the loops my only my only concern and while i get uh a lot of the people's upsetness with uh the microtransactions but i also get a uh, centurion's perspective of you know like if if you play the game enough you won't need it because you'll get it in game because like i i have that case there's a i have a phone game and it, it, you know it's a it's a mobile gotcha game but i have been playing it for so long now that like i've n i haven't had to buy the in-game currency at all because you earn it in game after you know play i i kind of have a self-feeding loop of Oh, I make enough of the currency that whenever a new event happens on the mobile game, I have enough to get everything from the, that event. And then I'll eventually, by the time the next event rolls around, I'll get enough currency to do that whole thing, which is, you know, great. And Helldivers 2 is following that loop fantastically, too. Um, now, obviously, I know with Dragon's Dogma, it's a single player game. It is a single player game, right? I'm I'm not mistaken on that. Yes, it is, yeah. Yeah, there's a okay. couple online elements. The pawn system is some online elements where like you can summon pawns from other people. So it's like pseudo but... online like Dark Souls games. No, are. no, 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 no. Like you literally summon like AIs that were created by other people. Like you, okay. there's never another player that enters your game. Yeah, you you build your own you can you build your own party members to follow you around in the game and you have these stones that you use to build them. And when you build one of these characters, essentially you, somebody from a different game of Dragon's Dogma 2 can summon the characters you create. Um, and that's why I was saying, like, if you played the game, I could summon your created pawns to be part of my party system. And that's why I jokingly said they'll they'll like tell you about what you how how uh, Dots plays the game. Like, oh, Dots spends a lot of time at the brothel. And it'd be like, that's interesting. He didn't tell us that. <laughs> make, make, make sure you edit that part out, Invader. I don't, I don't need to get that out there. <laughs> no, I, I don't worry. I, I, won't, I won't tell the missus. Don't worry, Dots. It's between us. No, us, it's okay. Us and... my, my, my Steam page and Xbox are clean. They don't have Dragon, Dragon's Dogma installed. Uh, <laughs> um, but, okay, no, okay. So, but that's good to know. Um, obviously, with a single-player game like that, you know, the, the, the positive in my mind is, that most likely means there won't be the issue of fo uh, FOMO because like that, that is really one of the big issue with, you know, the microtransaction beats is that they usually, it's like, if there's something, you know, an, a timed event or whatnot in a multiplayer game, there's that issue of FOMO of, Oh, I want to get everything. And I can't in time because of this, that, or the other thing, I'm going to have to spend currency to, you know, to eat, finish my battle pass or something like that. And I know that's still an issue with like destiny two at the moment, which, you know, right now they're they're they have more issues than people not playing 
their you know completing their battle pass. They just have issues with people not playing. Um, but my my only negative to this in Dragon's Dogma is I personally have a bit of an issue with like the temptation to spend money for things and like and and that's why like with on my phone i try to limit myself on how many mobile games i have installed on my phone because i actually have a bit of a quote-unquote gambling problem where it's like i have you know i get my paycheck and immediately the first thing I'm doing is I'm on my phone doing things. I get on my game like, oh, I now have money to spend on this microtransaction. And then it becomes a problem because then I spent money on the microtransaction. I probably shouldn't You're... have spent on the microtransaction. I probably should have spent on Dude, anything at, else. Uh, at my job, mm. at the end of every single day, they like for like the last 15 minutes of the day, the outside crew is sitting in the break area. And literally, they're all playing slots on their phones because in Arizona, they made uh, gambling legal on your phone for, like, slot machines and stuff. So, like, you'll be standing in the back room, room and all you hear is do-do-do, do-do-do, do-do-do from I them think, hitting I th- jackpots I think and we like ha- that. I, th- I think we have some of that in PA, too, but I, I'm not you're, 100% sure. You're telling me that the guy who used to come to my house every weekend and open a booster box of magic cards has L- a listen. problem with gambling? Magic <laughs> the gathering cards you can sell back! You can sell those back! Yes. That's an investment! See, we opened up a serial well, number card! It's, Do not we, we did, we did open a serial number. We opened one, a one time. serial numbered card. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was a cheap one. It's only probably like a hundred bucks top so, still. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's a really good point that I didn't even think of. The the whole um spent like overspent the people who have a tendency to overspend. Yeah, and like, and and once again, it's a single player game, so that's great. It's it it and if if sent what you're saying is great. It's not shoving it in your face that if you buy dragon's dogma just pay for the game and then don't look at the store page if it doesn't like tempt you or give you any prompts for that that's awesome i'm happy for that that's great i'm just worried that there are those people who will be like oh i've seen the store page i know what it has to offer oh i can throw two dollars here oh (laughs) i can throw five dollars here and then that turns into oh you paid for the the price of the game twice you paid for three copies of the game already you paid for four copies of the game. I, I don't think it will get that egregious with Dragon's Dogma. But once again, I personally have that issue of there's that temptation. I don't like being tempted out the gate. And that's why, you know, something like Helldivers is great because everything can be earned in the game entirely. I have spent money on Helldivers. I have spent money on the premium currency in Helldivers. Because at the time when the new um, pass came out, I didn't have exactly enough, and I didn't want to spend the extra, the extra, you know, you know, ten plus matches to find super credits and whatnot. But at the same time, I also look at it, it as like, okay, I paid forty dollars for the game. I'll pay an extra ten dollars for this pass, and these this game is great, and it is actually an enjoyment of my time. And I'm sure if like Dragon's Dogma, some people have that same mentality. I'm enjoying the game. It's worth my time. I'm willing to give them some more of my money. But then you have to get into that um, mental, moral issue of how many times do you keep saying that until it's, you know, some sort of denial or an excuse to spend money on the game. It's like, oh, they did really good on this game. It's worth, you know, me spending another $10 on it. And again, we have an intervention with me and Elder Scrolls right now. (laughs) (laughs) What an energy. (laughs) Let's listen. If Listen. you if you were with me and Crusader back in the uh, Mass Effect Three multiplayer days, oh, oh my boy. god, oh dude, oh, okay, oh my that, god. that right there. <laughs> that, that, actually, yeah. I, okay, we I can all the relate. We can all yeah. relate. The 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 yeah. awo- the uh, uh, the purified Awoken Collector when that came out, or the the Krogan Our... Warlord or the Geth Juggernaut. Oh boy, we, were we spending money on those we watched, loot boxes. We watched our one friend uh, who worked at Best Buy at the time spend an entire week's salary Uh-oh. on <laughs> loot boxes for the final DLC launch of that game, which is part of why 
like I have a very um okay, so strong stance. Why. I have a very strong stance about microtransactions after watching that happen. So, but I'll, I'll wait until I go to talk more about we, that. We complain but, about the problem, but we were part of yeah, the problem. Yeah, like, <laughs> like we were part of the problem, and that's why I see it as a problem almost. Okay. Like, I, we used to give each other Xbox gift cards for, like, yeah. birthdays and Just events and stuff like that, specifically that. to buy more microtransactions in that. Like, it was bad. It was really bad. Oh my Bi Bioware had us by the ball. Yeah, because it, it was so much fun. But, like, <laughs> man. It was the character with the whips that came out her hands. Yeah, oh. that, that was the, um, the Dragoon. Hmm. Damn. Oh, man. Yeah. Any, anything else, Tots? Uh, <laughs> just me wallowing in self pity and sorrow. And oh, I'm like, I'm complaining about microtransactions, and I still buy Match at the Gathering cards and play, buy yeah. things from Games Workshop with Warhammer. <laughs> I'm not in a, this is my this is my call for help. This, I need an intervention. <laughs> All right, please chat. Whoever's listening, uh, do not FOMO into anything. Do not FOMO. <laughs> As we speak. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. That's all I got. I'm, I'm not going to ramble on it. Good. <laughs> that was good. Um, okay, so I'll go over to MLD, then Grimes, and to round out the chat, Crusader. Uh, MLD, um, have you been playing any of these games that we've been touching on? Uh, not yet, but um, I'm definitely keeping my eye out for these games. Like... Um, what Titanfall meets uh, what Stardew Valley? I mean, I play both <laughs> games separately, so I mean, this does seem like a nice mix of that. I mean, yeah, because Stardew Valley, I, I put like seventy hours into that game when it came when when I uh, came to Game Pass, and no, it's a it's a relaxing game. There's definitely a place for games where you you, you just want to take your time and just uh, do things at your own pace. And only this time it's first person and you're in a suit of a mech. So, but it's my own personal um, a principle not to play games that are early access, access because I, I don't want to burn out on something that I know is going to get better and get more content. So I'm happy for everyone else who's trying it out and um, the, the impressions seem good. But uh, I, I would personally wait for like the version 1.0, see what they refine, see what they add. So when I do play it, it'll be a uh, more complete package. But th again, that that's just my own personal uh, way of doing things. Now, Dragon's Dogma, I never played the first one, but I I'm seeing reviews for this, and it's you know Capcom. These guys are these guys are some of the best. Like these guys are on a hot streak for several years now with banger after banger. Um, I I of course. You hear about the negative stuff with the microtransactions. In my opinion, I think most of the negativity is coming from the reviewers didn't declare it when they reviewed the games. And or the microtransactions didn't dock any points, whereas some gamers feel that it should have, given that it's a single-player full-price game. Now, personally, I think that reviewers should have mentioned it, but otherwise... If they're not intrusive, um, I don't see the big issue. I mean, if you can grind just playing the game naturally and you don't really need the stuff, then, eh, okay, I can kind of get it. Because I do see the appeal in pain for convenience. Um, like some of the stuff, uh, like, 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 like uh, carrying weight or fast travel, I hear those were a couple things that you could pay for. I mean, yeah, I kind of get it. I mean, like, I I'm a father, I'm, I work full-time, I only get to game maybe a couple hours a night if I'm lucky. If I want to make the most of my time, I might put in a few bucks here or there. So I can understand that. So, but if it was more predatory, then I would be right there with everybody else. But my own personal thing I would agree with is that reviewers should have mentioned it and not led, led gamers on. That said... Arguably, in... Capcom should have mentioned it, right? Like... We can well, say reviewers yeah. should have mentioned it, but arguably the publisher who's doing it should have been upfront about it, right? Like, is it really on reviewers to be the first person to tell us things like this? Well, kind of. It's, it's kind of their job. Capcom well, I, made the game, but it's reviewers' job to tell their viewership about the game. But 
and that's where we go down the realm of oh automatic points lost because it has microtransactions but it's like but what if they're like only cosmetic only and totally like let's grade the value of the microtransactions are they pay to win like battlefront 2 yes. or i i i functionally agree with that sentiment that the reviewers should i just don't think the reviewers should be the ones that have to announce to the world that there are oh no that should be that there are these like kind that. of purchases does that make sense like it should oh, be the yeah. reviewers telling you how those purchases impact the game i think that's fair but like it shouldn't be on them to be the ones that are that take the the blame for when users find out about it, it should like finding out about it should be from oh, Capcom up front. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember watching uh, ACG's review on Dragon Dragon's Dogma, and uh, he uh, down in the comment section, people were like, "Unsubscribed, you didn't tell me about the microtransactions." I'm just like, D maybe he didn't even realize they were there because they're not really intrusive. They, it, they were in the press kit, so like the kit that like Capcom sent out to describe okay. some things about the game and give bullet points because like. A, a lot of review like that's that's used a lot very commonly in the in the industry and there's like things to make sure you don't miss and things like that that you may want to talk about that maybe you missed in your playthrough they were in there jez totally didn't re like jez corden didn't read it because he was like he was like i didn't want to read anything capcom had to tell me because i wanted to experience the game for myself because that's how he reviews things he then said i should have read it before i put out my review and that's my bad but he didn't even know that they existed until the the whole controversy stirred up. Well, See, there is that's... that, but to add on to add on that, because no one mentioned it, I can't help but feel like no one wanted to get blacklisted from Capcom future release codes. Well, what's wild like is they were a, like in the press kit, after. right? Like Capcom mentioned it in the press kit, which is different than their previous games. Right, but mentioning it like up front, I don't know. That, that could I feel like that that could have been a reason because no one ended up talking about it until the game actually came right. out. I do feel like that's a little bit suspicious. Now, again, that, that's a whole other topic because it's very subjective. Like, uh, do you right. dock it points is. for it? How much points would you dock for it? It, it would differ with by reviewer by reviewer. Which and, is how yeah. things should be, to be honest with you, because people are always like reviews should be objective, but there's no such thing because yeah, you're talking not, about what you thought about a game. Like, there's, there's no such thing as an ob objective review unless you're specifically talking about performance and stuff, things that are calculable, right? Right. Like, and, and that's where I'm like, yeah, it should be up to the individual reviewers to tell you what they thought about it. Yeah, but I, I don't, I'm not too concerned about all this stuff because, again, they don't seem egregious. And I also, I'm, I'm a realist, end of the day. Like, I can see the gamer's point of view. I can see the publisher's point of view because AAA games, they're more expensive than ever. And if they do it in a way that is only meant for, like, uh, convenience and not a necessity... I can understand it. So, that said. Um, I do have a question, though, because I am curious about this game. Like, I'm seeing um, reviews on it. I'm seeing gameplay of it. Um, would you say that there is a, uh, any choice and consequence aspect to this game? Yes. That's, uh, like, the entire yeah. point. Yeah. So, in one of the missions, I was asked to go rescue somebody. And that's when a pop-up came up that said, game time passes in this game. Be careful taking on too many quests because some quests are affected by time. And if you don't go rescue this dude right now, you'll probably be dead when you get around to it. Okay. Okay. Um, are there uh, are there factions you can take sides with? That I haven't gotten into yet. Every okay. NPC is killable. No NPC is protected like Skyrim. Like where Skyrim, you can't go and <laughs> kill the Arl. Every NPC can die, and it is almost fully open world so any monster can fly into a city and just kill people it is meant to be incredibly dynamic so that yeah. no playthrough is like another playthrough hmm. okay but um won't you break the game if you kill like a very important quest giver though because the, the thing is it's that there kind of is a main quest line but like yeah you can completely break the game and that's not a bug that's the, how the game is like, oh, okay. It, it's it's meant to almost be like like we we call Baldur's Gate three like a D and D campaign, but it's turn based, right? Right. Dragon's Dogma is kind of like the real time action kind of equivalent, but less structured in the same way. It, like, it's just kind of they throw you in the world and they say go do things. And the only reason it's even comparable to a Souls-like in difficulty is because you can stumble on an area that will absolutely kick your ass because you're not ready for it. But <laughs> if you're on level for things, you shouldn't 
have too much trouble outside of maybe some boss fights. I right? had an incident like that where I wandered into an area that apparently 15 goblins hopped out of a hole, and I'm like, I am so screwed. Yeah, <laughs> like, um, and the, the world is exceptionally dynamic, and, like, it, it's really kind of, like, really, like, dynamism-based, like, there's a great video that's going around YouTube where a guy found this ogre, but the ogre tripped and made a natural bridge across the ravine for him. And then he killed the ogre and knocked it into the ravine and, like, his natural bridge went away. Like, huh. it's... Okay, okay. The oh. game itself is really, really cool. I would probably wait for a couple performance patches. I think I'll do that. That would be yes. that would be the only Spe recommendation. Speaking on NPCs, I keep hearing people are killing as many NPCs as they can find to help the performance of the game. Yeah. Oh my god. The the oh main god. city, which sent you haven't been to yet, is like a twenty I'm, FPS difference. I'm trying to get there now, and yeah. that's why I had to laugh when the dude's like, "Come with me, we're going to the capital." And I look, I'm like. Holy cow, man, that... we're, like, walking halfway across the world! Yeah, most people won't recognize the performance issues until they get to the capital. So if you have ignored the capital for your first while playing until Capcom gets a performance patch or two out, you'd actually probably be fine. <laughs> I haven't well. had any, I haven't it. See, for me, I've had some of the coolest things, like, in I'm used to, like, Elder Scrolls Online harpies, where they just float in front of you and they yeah. do their attacks and you chop them down. This one, the harpies can fly over you and make your character fall asleep, like you're in the middle of combat and your character just collapses onto the ground, and you got to wait for your pawn to come get you to like get to wake you up. And then in the middle of all that, as you're standing up, the harpy can fly over you and grab you by your shoulders and just start relocating you somewhere else on the map if you don't fight them off. I was just like, okay, this is totally different and fun. Okay, well, you guys sold me. I do. I did also pick up that the game is a bit janky, as well. But it, it, some of it's like nice and acceptable. But yeah, I feel like this game. Uh, yeah, I, I could wait a bit, but yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, like like uh, you're gonna hear me go off a little bit about the MTX when I go, but like game wise, the game's incredible looks incredible i'll be getting it when it performance is fixed would you say it's like a, a game of the year contender yes Ooh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely yeah. okay okay um like i i like i like just like jedi fallen order or, or survivor which i'm playing right now i'm gonna wait for this until it's, it's nice and patched cool thing about this actually you know what i'll save this for mine go yeah i, I i'll save that for mine go go i don't know oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I, I, i'm good i said my piece like uh yeah, I saw both games. I'm looking forward to both games well, when they're ready. When they're ready. So, All yeah. right. Sounds good there, MLD. Sounds good. Uh, Grimes, I mean, I'd love to hear your thoughts on uh, these games. I think you've spent time with at least one of them, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, again, please, uh, let's hear your thoughts. So, first of all, a question for uh, Centurion and Crusader. Can you romance that ogre that you mentioned? I don't think there's romance in Dragon's Dogma. As far no, as I'm aware, there's no there's no romance in it. I don't it's know. Not gonna, it's not going to have... get game of the year then. You it's know what? <laughs> you know what? I actually really like that. I like I, I I don't like how romance is done in games. Me personally, anyway. So I actually kind of really like that. So I don't know because my buddy when he bought me the the game, he actually gave me the deluxe version of the game. And there's some kind of pendant that you're supposed to Oh, never to mind. Get. There is romance in it. Absolutely there, is romance in it. Oh, there's okay. Never some mind. some kind <laughs> of pendant in the game. And it says, give this to somebody that you want to build a strong relationship with. And I'm just like, all right, I'm going to hold that on to that Skyrim because thing? I really don't even know what that's like. Mm -hmm. It is. It is very similar to Skyrim. Yeah, no, it it, it is. It, it, there is romance in in uh, okay. Dragon's Dogma, for yeah. sure. I don't think it's going to be, sure. like, ro romance on, like, what we've seen with um, Starfield oh, and uh, other, or even uh, Baldur's Gate. Baldur's I don't think it's going to be that that in-depth of a romance. <laughs> I think it's probably uh, there are th There's, so far, there's, I can find two confirmed characters there's a romance scene for. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Okay, so, so it looks like you can romance almost any NPC in the game. So it's uh -oh. back to a game of a year contention. Can you buy property? I don't know. Hmm. Okay. 
Oh. You're ho you're homeless, and then he's in that game. But uh, yeah, so obviously I haven't played the game. However, as yeah, I'm it's, hearing, there's that... houses. It looks like. Oh, oh, sick. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like from what I'm hearing from you guys and from seeing other people talking about it online, it seems like a very good game. I've mentioned in the past that I'm not big into fantasy games. Certain games like Dragon Age, The Witcher, I'm down to play. It's all about the rich story and interesting characters and fun gameplay for me. That's all I, I, I ask for. Um, and like you guys mentioned, I think it's super impressive. Uh, the ability to use your friends uh, spawn in in your game i think it's genius and uh, uh it can actually help your uh your gameplay and experience if one if your friends spawn it's much stronger and whatnot and the game looks gorgeous it's a really good looking game um I'm actually worried about Bioware. I don't think they can pull pull it off with the next uh, Dragon Age. But I'm choosing to Me too. be positive. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to be positive. It's hopefully they can. So fingers crossed. But, uh, I, I, you know, I'm not too confident at the moment, but I'm going to try to. Regarding the uh, microtransactions controversy, uh, well, generally, I'm against them. Uh, they can become an addiction, as someone here just mentioned earlier, dots, um, to both adults and children. And in many cases, we've seen kids bullied for not having, for not being able to afford a certain skin, a skin on Fortnite, or a player or, or an EAFC, like, you know, games like that, uh, or Valorant, some of, like, some of the skins on the guns are ridiculously expensive and people get bullied for not being able to afford that. Uh, like many of you guys, I'm against predatory microtransactions. You know, like the $1 for bullet re reloads idea. Uh, the fast travel, which is something that's been talked about in uh, Dragon, I mean, in uh, Dragon's Dogma 2, that you pay for fast travel. Uh, grant, for me, Grant, uh, the, I would probably explore, I'll take my time exploring the areas. Uh, so I would, I would, don't like fast traveling in most games. Um, and then there's you know a lot of uh, a lot of companies also could be interested in inventory capacity being locked under a paywall. That's something I would never I would I wouldn't like to see. Uh, a lot of these companies they just prey on people that haven't got a lot of time to play, so they try to sell you the idea of fast-forwarding your experience or your gameplay. Uh, get, and, you know, uh, eventually games will start costing $100 and they'll continue to add micro microtransactions. That's, not, that's never going to stop once it's been sorted. Look at, Star, look at Star Citizen. That game is a complete scam. It's a scam. It's never going to release because people keep buying those ridiculous starter packs, packs they sell. Uh, some of the ships in the game cost more than $600. And they even have a ship bundle that costs $48,000. Uh, mm -hmm. Just tell me that's not predatory. You can you can buy a car with that much money. Imagine if Microsoft, Sony, EA, Ubisoft, or whoever, one of the big studios, 
May Venmo charging for the, uh, for a piece of horse armor. Two thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars for that. Forks will come out. So um, one of the one of the best uh, microtransaction systems I've seen and is and is done right is GTA Online's uh, shark cards. I mean, most of you, I don't think most of you guys have played G GTA Five or online, but uh, it's essentially credit cards. And just like hell divers, they really are enforced on you. And you could earn in game currency by playing uh, the game. And you can purchase anything in the game with your earned currency. But uh, of course, those shark card credit cards, they, they uh, help you a lot. I've, I've, bought, I've bought several of them. Just to support the studio for all the good work Rockstar did with uh, GTA 5 and online. But for the most part, I played the game without spending money. Um, but uh, uh, now, before I, before I continue to get sidetracked with other games, from what I've read is a the, the sort of microtransactions in Dragon's Dogma aren't anything new. And the first game featured similar microtransactions that aren't detrimental to the game. Uh, you know, when I, play, when I play it eventually, and I do plan on playing it, I know for a fact that I'm not going to buy any of those microtransactions but if you want to that's up to you it's your money and you can do whatever you want to with it that unless it's a star citizen or valorant those games are complete scams and please, please don't encourage that uh, now regarding the other game we mentioned earlier uh, Lightyear, Front Lightyear Frontier. Um, as I mentioned to you, uh, Invader Off Air, the art style and setting kind of reminds me of one of the Love, Death, and Robots episode uh, mm -hmm, that's from right, season yeah. one. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know what Love, Death, and Robots is, it's a Netflix show featuring 2D and 3D short film animations. Really good show. Uh, every episode, it's a different uh, movie and they're really cool. But yeah, but anyway, yeah, uh, I've played, played it for about an hour and a half, maybe two. So I'm still very early into the game, but it's very interesting. I like some of the tools. Like you, um, Centurion already mentioned some of the, the weapons, but the uh, the vacuum gun, the water cannon are really I like them. Um, and of course, we have to remember that this game is currently in preview, so uh, there's still small issues with it, bugs, mechanics that need to be improved, other quality of a quality of life improvements that need to be added. One thing that doesn't really bother me, but it's super annoying, is that when your mech flips upside down uh, or on the side, you have to get out of your mech to flip it back up. Oh, really? I, didn't, I haven't experienced that. Oh, yeah. So, so if I've fallen off like a cliff or a mountain, and yeah, you just have to come out and flip your your uh, mech or your so it's it it doesn't bother me that much but it's annoying because I've I've fallen several times but um, and then another thing that it's kind of annoying is uh, when you walk in front of an item that you've dropped 
it picks it back up automatically. So you, you have to go back into your uh, uh, backpack or whatever and have to drop them again and make sure you don't walk in front of it. So it's small things like that that can be ironed out eventually. Um, so um, I'm interested to learn more about this story. Uh, something I found out today is that you can also feed the animals. I don't know if any of you guys knew that. Yeah, yeah, I did yeah. that. Nice. I, I still don't have uh, the proper food to feed some of them, but uh, I saw that. Which is cool. And the music is super relaxing, um, very smoothing, whatever. And it's also a perfect game. Like you guys, some of you guys mentioned, it, it's a perfect game for family. Uh, and I just hope that the game does well on Xbox. I hope more people play it. Uh, I'm sure it's going to get better with time. It's still early, it's, you know, it's still in development. So. And you can actually, what's cool is that you can actually, in the menus, you can uh, send them feedback, or there's a, an option that you can send them feedback uh, to the developers. So I, I'm probably going to do that with some of the things I just mentioned, and I hope the game does well. But anyway, that's, that's what I have to say about the game and uh, about the uh, controversy surrounding... Um, Hmm. Dragon's Dogma. Okay. Thank you very much, Grimes. And uh, yeah, Crusader, I know you've been waiting uh, patiently. Why don't you round us out on this one? Got any thoughts on uh, either game? Oh, yeah, Light Your Frontier, I got no thoughts on. It, it looks neat from what I've watched on loop. Mm -hmm. But uh, well, it, yeah, it's just tight. Um, but it looks neat. Uh, Dragon's Dogma. Um, as I said, I think the game looks freaking awesome. It has performance issues and it has the weird store issues, and I'm, I'll talk about both of them. Uh, the performance issues, um, man, it's one thing to have some drops, but like the delta in the game is like 20 in between different areas, which is not great. Um, that being said, they're not not fixable, and this is kind of like a, a Capcom thing. It just means I'm going to wait to play the game, because they probably will be fixed, especially with as popular as the game is. They're going to want to have this game in as great shape as it can be. Um, and it, it, the more NPCs there are in an area, it's almost tied almost completely to how many NPCs there are. Um, one of the really cool things in, um... Reverse from the performance, though, is that Capcom left it uncapped. The game doesn't actually have a frame rate cap, which is really, really good on the Xbox Series consoles and on PC because of a feature called ALLM and VRR, or VRR, which everyone should know what VRR is. It's the variable... Um, refresh rates where mm -hmm. your uh, the device can match the TV and change the refresh rate. ALLM lets it do that below a, a normal um, ratio and actually work really well. And so the game will look more steady on Xbox than probably anything else except PC. Um, like it, it's, it, it'll look... The, the best place on console to play it right now is probably the Series X. Uh, if you're going to play it on console. On PC, it really, really depends on if you have a 30 or 40 series card or later. Really, you want 40 series for the version of the LSS uh, and, and things like that. But, man, is it not exceptionally well optimized for anything low end. Like, I probably, if you were a Series S player, probably wouldn't play this game. I would, I would wait. But because it has an uncapped frame rate, it's future-proofed. When you know, we move to whatever the next generation is, or even if there's a pro Xbox console or not, we'll see how um, true they stay to, we're not doing that, because I, I think they are doing that. But if, uh, um, if, if, you know, that next console with an upgrade, Dragon's Dogma will instantly get an upgrade because of it running on better technology, which is really cool, and kudos to Capcom for doing something I've said that a lot of developers should have is have an experimental called experimental FPS mode where it just uncaps it and future proofs the game. 
right? Very kudos to that. Very happy to see someone do that. I can't believe Capcom was the first one to do it, but kudos. Um, Because it's even better than 120 FPS modes, because having it fully uncapped means that, like, even two consoles in the future, it, it, it could be getting um, bonuses. Um... Now let's talk about the microtransactions, and I have a very unique problem with them that hasn't been mentioned yet, but I'm going to save that for last in, in this conversation. Uh, the first thing, we are, I touched on it in MLD, so I'm not going to go into it again, it, is that they didn't mention them publicly prior to this. And some people will say, but the thing has, the, the, the store listings say that there is, quote, in-app purchases, so people should have known. Any game that has a digital deluxe upgrade has an in-app purchase rating from the ESRB. That 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 rating means nothing. It's kind of terrible. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, which has no DLC and no microtransactions, has that on its thing because you can upgrade to its digital deluxe. Um which is 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 dumb. It's really dumb. Um so honestly, no, people would not have known about it uh, unless they were told by what should be Capcom, but what should have also been reviewers. So that that's my first problem with with the microtransactions is they're not upfront with it having them. Um and if you don't see them that's almost not not you don't want to see them in game, but the fact that like some people didn't even see them when they were purchasing it is honestly a little bit of a problem to me because of that in I I have a problem when consumers aren't informed with things. Um, and this is not a this is not a problem that is unique to this game. Uh, it is just a problem that can be pointed out with this game while the conversation's being had. Um, second issue is consumer optics. When a consumer sees microtransactions, the first thing they're going to ask is, "Is it uh, visual, like uh, aesthetic kind of things, like skins in Fortnite, or is it functional?" And in this case, it is functional. Um, I have absolutely zero problem with aesthetic microtransactions. I do have some problems with how companies tend to price them, but thats I don't actually have a problem with their existence. Functional is where I usually have an issue with all of them, simply for existing. Um, for the sole reason that generally, if they exist, it means the game was probably designed for the sake of their existence. In the case, I want to be very clear with the case of Dragon's Dogma, I have had several people who I really trust their opinions on, um, including uh, a, a few regular users, but both uh, I had extensive discussions with both Gene Park from the Washington Post and Jazz Corden from Windows Central about how the design really didn't change at all from the first game to the second game, and Grimes no, the first game does not have any DLC on um, uh, Xbox series at all. If you buy uh, Dragon's Dogma The Dark Arisen, which was the remaster of the original, there is no other purchases that can be made, as far okay. as I could see on, on the store. Um, th this is more of a Capcom, modern Capcom thing that started with Devil May Cry 5, not, not that the previous Dragon's Dogma itself had it. I, I did want to check before I, I brought that up. Um, so the game itself was not designed in a way to push them because that's the general fear with any functional, um, kind of microtransaction is, is this something that's just a convenient skip or did they design the systems in such a way that it pushes you even implicitly without telling you that they exist to seek out a way to to get past a poorly designed system. And I think that Capcom really shot themselves in their own foot here because one of the huge interview points that caught a ton of people's attention was that they had they the Dragon's Dogma even the first one has very basic fast travel where it's not like really fast travel to wherever you want to on the map it's there's only some there's only a select key locations that you can fast travel to and you have to go through a whole bunch of crap in game to do it and the microtransaction just gives you one of the current one of the things that you need to put down to do the the um fast traveling but it doesn't actually unlock any form of fast travel for you you actually have to go through all the steps in game to still do everything um but 
when you have a developer saying that we have very little fast travel because fast travels for boring games and then you see on the store there is something that you can purchase for fast travel someone who doesn't know enough about the game which is most people i would argue it's 95 percent of people because most people aren't as franchised and uh, enfranchised as us and really dig into the dirt of all of these things they're gonna go but you told me that fast travel was for boring things and now you're selling me fast travel what right and so when people see functional mtx subconsciously or even consciously they're gonna go out and they're gonna lash out and say was the game designed in such a way to drive you to purchase these and the key example of a game that was designed in a way to make you go out and purchase microtransactions was the original version of Star Wars Battlefront 2. Well, I don't say what, the 2017, the original version of the 2017 game called Battlefront 2, not the 2005 game called Battlefront 2, which is, ugh, why, why do we have to name games the same thing? Um, and, you know, eventually that game was reworked and they added all the PvE stuff and they, they completely redid progression and stuff like that. Um, but... You, you look at how other games do it, and that is how consciously gamers think about things. Oh, I can purchase all of these things out here. What does that say about how the game was designed? It's going to push me to want to buy these things. And I can't blame any single person for thinking that. And as a lot of people have said, Capcom really shot themselves in the foot for even including these in the game, because they're not necessary. And it all it really does is paint a bad PR picture for what is easily a game of the year contender. Um, and But e even then, e I even look at that, and I still think that it's a non-issue, personally, in regards to that. The real reason I think it's an issue is because in October of 2023, Capcom came out and said that single player mods are equivalent to cheating, right? That if you're installing a, a, a mod in uh, a single player game of theirs, it is the equivalent of cheating in a multiplayer game. And the sheer fact that these MTX exist gives them more of a legal recourse to go after any form of modding that they don't like because they can say it now caused damages if it even remotely would de-influence people to purchase content. I'm a huge supporter of user-made content in video games, whether it be in directly made within the game, whether it be uh, like, you know, Halo Infinite's Forge, or whether it be made outside the game and added to the game, like some of the great content for Skyrim. Uh, one of the best examples being uh, The Forgotten City, which became a standalone game. It was so good. Everyone go play The Forgotten City now that I've mentioned it. Um, and so to hear that Capcom wants to go after modders as ch cheat makers, essentially, they now have a smoking gun with the MTX to say that it costs them post-launch revenue streams, which makes me have a significant problem with its existence when they have that stance as a company. It's very outside of Dragon's Dogma itself, but more as like Capcom as a company, right? And people will be like, oh, well, you know, they'll just go after the things that are like uh, the, the hex editors that let you kind of edit attributes of the game, like give yourself items and things like that. And I had to say, no, they'll go after anything that even remotely devalues the items, such as anything that does like a total overhaul of systems in the games. Um, which, which is a, a damn shame because some of the coolest new developers who hop on the scene come from modding communities and things like that. And it, it's kind of, that's the reason why I'm mad at them. Like, I don't really care about the whole, what they do, because... The game, I have people I trust who say the game was not compromised to include them. It was just Capcom being dumb. And and so I'm not mad at them for actually existing. I am mad at them because of Capcom, uh, for, for Capcom doing this. And retroactively, you can apply my anger to this, to games like Resident Evil 4 Remake or Devil May Cry 5 or anything like that that has similar things because of this stance that Capcom took in October of last year. Um, because you, you'll notice I didn't, you, you didn't hear me get real mad about it with like Resident Evil 4, with the sole exception that I got upset that they weren't upfront that the game was going to have it and they added it post launch. That is a 
that's again a bad methodology to implement something that didn't really it was the same thing where they were kind of like totally unnecessary and capcom just being strange um i i just look at a uh, um I, I just look at this this whole situation in the light of Capcom thinks single player uh, mods are cheating, and the MTX could be their smoking gun to start going after people. And they have, you know, there's been a lot of court cases recently. We've talked about them on this show with like Bungie and Activision winning multi million dollar lawsuits against um, companies for damages. I would not be shocked if Capcom tried to do the same thing towards modders of their community and go at the the reason why being the mtx because they, they can't say you know it, the modders can't hurt a game that doesn't have additional post-launch purchases um and really can't even hurt games that have standard dlc because a lot of the a lot of modders will either not uh, not include it but not be incompatible with it or they'll say you have to own all of this stuff um in order to do it and we won't most modders won't even support pirated copies um if they if a modder finds that you're saying that their shit doesn't work and you have a pirated copy the modder will be like i will not support you leave my and they'll ban them from like uh their forums and stuff like that so but with the mtx in the equation I could see, I, I can I can very easily see a world where Capcom starts going after them, and I think that's a massive problem. So I'm weird in that I don't actually care about the MTX. I care about the modding communities who the MTX is, sh by existing, is sure to impact. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I know where you're coming from, for sure, yeah. Um, yeah, so, you know, it's just, we see really cool things come out of mods, like Dota 2 was a the the there was never a Dota one. Dota one was a mod for Warcraft three, right? And Valve hired the people who made Dota the Dota one mod, and they made a full standalone game called Dota two, right? We we see games we see this happen a lot. Uh, Falkscar is a massive mod for um, Skyrim. It was one of the first New World mods that added an entire new country for you to go to. I think it is on Xbox, I think you can play it on Xbox. You can download it and play it. Um, but the developer who made Falkscar originally tried to get hired by, uh, Bethesda. They said no, but Bungie ended up hiring him back in, like, 2012. And so, like, you see these modding communities when really cool mods come out. You, you see the industry grow because of it almost every time. Almost every time, uh, you, you see the industry grow because of mods. And to see Capcom go against mod creators um in general is bad but like the writing is on the wall with the existence of the mtx in their games as yeah they they have a way to go after them too and get rid of them because they don't like them which is a very japanese company thing a lot of japanese game developers don't like it when their games get modded because they think it hurts their vision when in reality people like their vision so much that they they want to have more to do inside of it or want to tweak it in in some way but they love it so much that they're even bothering to do it and and so i get real frustrated with those kind of things mm -hmm. no understandable crusader and uh honestly like really good perspective on that uh, especially we you know with the, uh, the modding stuff um yeah. but really i mean all around too just from the uh the panel like a lot of interesting takes uh, definitely an interesting variety um yeah guys i mean uh dragon's dogma 2 definitely seems like an interesting game to me and i might have to check it out but i do have to agree if there is like some bugs or whatever i'll i might have to wait just because of my backlog uh maybe a couple months might be a summer game for me but i definitely want to check it out at some point and yeah let your frontier i'll you know i'll give it a go i've been playing it a bit and uh seems like a uh I don't know, a pretty fun game even if it is in game preview but uh i suggest pay, uh trying it out guys all right, uh, to everybody in the chat, thanks for uh, tuning in. If you haven't done so already, smash the like button. And uh, yeah, share out the show. Let everybody know that we are currently live. Uh, just looking at the time. Uh, guys, we'll move on to uh, our next topic, our last bit of news. Uh, this past week saw the return of the future game show, seeing some new titles get revealed, along with ones that we've already been aware of, that we've seen already, including a few notable Xbox Game Pass titles. Uh, 
I know there's some people that, uh, <laughs> there's a couple of things to touch on this, but uh, General MLD, did anything catch your eye in particular? Uh, yeah, yeah, a few games did. It seems like a, a smaller, interesting show with um, mostly indie games. Um, let's see, the ones I, that caught my eye, uh, Flintlock looks interesting. Um, I think I think Game Pass is getting that day one. So, yeah, third-person adventure game. I'll see how the, the reviews turn out for that game before I uh, decide to jump in on that game. Um, the one that's higher on my list, uh, Still Wakes the Deep. Uh, first-person horror game on this uh, oil rig that's falling apart, and you're being stalked by this thing, whether it's otherworldly or not, I don't know, but that's also on Game Pass. I'm definitely going to play that game. Um, like my horror games uh, here and there, so this looks like a... a, a it's an indie game, too, so I don't see it being too long as well. I'm looking forward to that, because the atmosphere itself looks uh, very, very interesting to me. Um, no Rest for the Wicked. I think that's uh, Moon Studios' new game. Yep. They make great games. Yep. The, the Ori games, one, two. I like me, like me some isometric uh, action games, and they say that it blends in some different genres as well. So really keeping an eye on that game. Uh, these guys, uh, they do not miss. Uh, Sandland uh, stood out to me. The art style is based on uh, uh, Akira Toriyama, Rest in Peace. It's a vehicular tank-based uh, action game. Um, yeah, the characters look nice. Yeah, you know, again, it reminds me of you know Dragon Ball Z, that that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I may check it out just just out of respect for the guy. Uh, you know, we, we lost the legend recently. But I uh, feel like uh, the news that people were talking about was uh, uh, what was it called? Uh, Enotria? Is that, is that what it's called? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That game canceled the Xbox version. Want to prioritize the uh, the PlayStation One, and yeah, I, I got a couple things to say about that. Uh, it's an indie Souls-like game, which is still a uh, very popular these days with you know Elden Ring, Liza P, that kind of stuff. Now, I say it's a bad call for a few reasons because I look at Liza P. It's a double A Souls game, sold millions, but it was also on Game Pass. Um, it got the engagement, it got the word of mouth out there, which I think helped overall. And I certainly played the game because of that. And I'm sure I'm not, I'm not alone in that either. And on top of that, indie games also, they just have more of a home and a presence on Xbox. So this whole thing makes no sense to me. If you're worried about um, a lack of sales, just do what Liza P did. Take the Game Pass upfront revenue and get your engagement from the Xbox, uh, Xbox community that way. Because... People can argue about Game Pass uh, sustainability in terms of games going on it. AAA games, it's a harder sell to, for that upfront uh, cost because the, co the, the, the game budget is just that much more. But for indie games, it's almost universally praised because a Game Pass uh, upfront payment, uh, just, just to be on it, uh, the marketing alone, the word of mouth, uh, the visibility, but the payment would cover most of your indie development costs because you're such a small studio and the costs are so low to make the game. So to pass up on that opportunity, it just, it just makes, it, it's tone deaf, makes no sense to me. Um, I don't know. I, I, I question, I question their, their, their judgment on that one. And if it does come later, they should at least make some kind of deal to compensate Xbox gamers for, for waiting a little bit. Because, because I've seen the game. It looks, yeah, it looks pretty decent for, for the budget that it is. So it's a bit of a lost text to the Xbox community. So uh, I hope uh, we get the game eventually, but I do not agree with uh, with what they did. They should mm -hmm. definitely take some kind of deal with Xbox. Like to me, uh, like I'm not big on the Souls-like games per se. I dabble in them from time to time. I got a couple on my back burner too. I know I talk about my back burner a lot. That being said, I actually am kind of interested in it just because it, it the take is like it, it deals with like Italian folklore and I liked a lot of what I saw personally. Um, actually, I think the studio is uh, Italian, actually uh, Milan based. Uh, I think the studio is called Giama Games. Yes. Um, but I do agree it's very um weird, kind of unsettling too that again they like they had to suspend Xbox in particular but focus on I guess PC and PlayStation uh versions of the game 
I'm not really too sure why they chose Xbox in particular to single out. Um, or if they're like an ID at Xbox game title at all. Um, if they, they rec- are. So they receive... So, so they, do they receive funding or something? More. So uh, you don't receive funding via ID at Xbox. You can receive dev kits. And right, support right, yeah. with support with putting your game on the store and like help with like getting it listed and getting through certification and stuff like that it's not so much that you get money they were covered they, they were not in an id at xbox show they were covered on the id at xbox youtube though when they announced the game like there the, mm-hmm. there is the video is still up to my knowledge on id at xbox's channel right yeah yeah, uh, see, if it wasn't is, if it wasn't on that, I think you know, it, it would have gotten less attention or backlash. But it, it does sting a bit more knowing that Xbox did give them some some highlight, some this spotlight. This is the second game similar to this that has happened to this year, by the way. What was the other What's one? The other one? Uh, Shadows Legacy, which was announced at the Xbox Showcase in 2022. They separated from their publisher, and when they separated from their publisher, they canceled the Game Pass. The the, the Game Pass deal basically went with it because their publisher was handing all oh, that. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. now the game's not even coming back. The Xbox version has been completely canceled. To my knowledge, it's only coming to PC. Hmm. Yeah, I, I guess the tri- the what I'm seeing online is that people don't want this to become more of a thing. They. You know, they always bring up the uh, the four games that Xbox poured over to PlayStation and say that it caused some kind of ripple effect, and this is this is what we're gonna see from that. Uh, I don't know about all that. It's just I don't know. I, I just hope it doesn't snowball from here. You know, Xbox they keep on top of these things, uh, stay in touch with the developers, and just make sure that uh, that if they're announced, they stay announced. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, I mean, one can hope. I mean, maybe they have a small dev team. Maybe that's an excuse. I mean, I'm not trying to make excuses for them, it's but sixty people. Oh, is it? That's okay. Not too small. Mm-hmm. That's not it's small. not. So they they describe themselves as a double A um, size developer, by the way. Hmm. Um, like they they also have like a big partnership with Sega. Oh, is that right? Yeah, that's why they were. That's why the game was announced at the Tokyo Game Show. Okay. And updates were given at Tokyo Game Show. And they actually kind of blamed Sega, in a way, for oh. how the game was prioritized. Really? Um, they put out a statement that was very hostile towards Xbox gamers. Um, yeah. And okay. they basically said that the partnership was with Sega, specifically the Asian branch of Sega. And that's, again, it was why it was announced at Tokyo Game Show. The, the, there's, there's no lie there and that they chose to prioritize playstation because in japan there are more playstations Mm -hmm. simply put um but they didn't really explain why pc was chosen over xbox uh especially when their their reason was they didn't have the money for the ports and the, the pc version would be the most costly because of the amount of uh um uh, configurations you have to uh account for but you know, it just seemed kind of like we didn't. I'll talk more about it, but yeah, they, 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 their, their, their statement was very hostile towards Xbox gamers, and it said like, um, some of the statements that have been made by, um, by Xbox gamers defaming us borderline on lawsuits. And I'm like, what? Come on. Now, granted, maybe they got death threats, and maybe that's what they're referring to, because it was translated very hastily from an Italian interview. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, it wasn't even posted by them. It was a translation that someone put up. And so, you know, I, I don't want to take everything from that translation at, at, uh, at, you know, law. So, like, maybe they were, like, they could have been completely referring to just people being nasty and, like, threat- making threats. You know what I mean? Because there, I guarantee there's some Xbox people who were sending them death threats. There's, it happens. Right. I've, I've, I've personally had it from our own community. Um... But yeah, you know, it, it was it was not a very, at least tra- the way it was translated, did not come off very uh, endearing to the studio. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, I mean, with that said, I mean MLD. I'm assuming you're, uh, you've uh, covered your bases. Yeah, I said what I said. <laughs> All <laughs> right. 
Well, since I got you on the Horde uh, Crusader, um, again, why don't you share your thoughts on, like, the future show, and, uh, again, even uh, extrapolate a little more on the whole, like, situation uh, with this one particular game as well. Sure. There wasn't a lot from the future show I was really interested in, uh, besides the, the game from the Ori devs. Um, that looks great. I, I can't wait to play it. Um, that being said, I did want to mention a different thing that was announced this week, just in this in this kind of place, and it was the Alpha Protocol coming back. Oh right, and getting yeah. listed on GOG. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually think Xbox might be um because it it was in it was done in partnership between Sega, Obsidian, and um, uh, GOG because GOG wanted it relisted on their store and basically helped fund the damn thing. But I actually do think um based on um some some things behind the scenes and stuff like that that xbox may be moving to to do another round of a couple games that they can get on backwards compatibility um mm -hmm. things that have kind of because they said that the, you know due to licensing and stuff they're basically out of things they can do but we're now three years in the future and like they got alpha protocol was historically had a horrible licensing situation where it was delisted from everything because of like how bad the licensing situation got. So to hear that it got relicensed and was able to be put back on sale is huge. And it kind of shows you that things can really change over time. And they never should have said that they're they're closing the thing forever, but they should have said it's going into like a full hibernation and maybe one day we'll be able to bring some more stuff back. But I, I think that they, I, I think that like with things like Alpha Protocol and Wizards of the Coast expressing, or not has, Wizards of the Coast, Hasbro expressing uh, interest in um, uh, bringing like the, the, the Transformers stuff back. There's a good, really healthy... I was healthy... just thinking that. Yeah. I there's... was just thinking that. There's a really healthy chance that we could see, like, another round of backwards compatibility, in my opinion, because of, like, Alpha Protocol being done by, um, like, Obsidian in this way. Um, I, I just, I think that there's a, there's a really good chance, because as long as the Xbox 360 code base for it still exists and they can do the slight tweaks that they need to do, uh, in theory, because of the licensing changes, they should be able to get it relisted fairly. So, you know, I, 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 that, that, that makes me happy. Now, about this Entoria thing, I'm with a lot of people where it's like, I, I don't think that this has anything to do with um, uh, the... Uh, Microsoft's whole, you know, porting things to other consoles, but like it implicitly does because the the reason Xbox isn't is is the one that's getting chosen to be skipped is because Xbox is the the smallest platform, right? Um and it it's the one that's growing the least. And so, of course, it's going to be the one that gets skipped which it implicitly isn't being helped by porting your games other places and, and, and stuff like that. So, like, yeah, I get that people are completely frustrated. I don't think it's a direct symptom of it. I think it's a very indirect symptom of, of Microsoft not being aggressive enough with their console hardware and really, really pushing the, the, the console enough. Um, that being said, I kind of also very much blame the devs after that uh, like I, I was very much that like Xbox needs to do better to make sure that people are putting stuff on their platform, and then the devs came out and said what they said and was roughly translated. And I'm like, yeah, my sentiment about Xbox needing to put shit on their platform hasn't changed, but I'm a little the fact that like the devs were attempting to like kind of pawn this off on Sega when Sega has a really good relationship with Xbox right now. Now, granted, I can't speak to mm -hmm. all of the, the like the Asian leadership at Sega, but like, I, I mean, Atlas is like completely behind Game Pass with you know their ports and they're putting everything on Xbox Day One. They have a great relationship, so I can't imagine that Sega necessarily was like the you know was like this. But like, I, I can't imagine a world where like Sega was like you need to prioritize PC and PlayStation. I can see a world where they said you need to prioritize PlayStation. But I, I, I can't imagine that Sega is the reason why PC and PlayStation were chosen. When, you know, you cancel the PC version and your your, your releasing becomes easier. So, I, you know, I'm very like, yeah, you know, Xbox definitely needs to do better in regards of getting stuff on their platform and making sure that if they're highlighting stuff on their ID at Xbox channel, they're sure that it's going to come to Xbox, 
you know, the same time that it comes to everyone else. Otherwise, it just looks bad. There's there's no way around that. It it looks bad. Um, when when you have yourself given some coverage to the game and you're not being treated like everyone else is. With Erebon, it's a little different. The 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 publisher changed, uh, and the deal was with the publisher, and they mm-hmm. went in separate directions. And Erebon's not coming to PlayStation, right? Erebon's only coming to Steam now. Um, which is the case that like a lot of indie developers do, right? They they release um. They, they release their games on Steam because Xbox might be good for indie developers. Nintendo and Steam are better. Uh, in the console space, Nintendo's the best. Now, granted, your game actually has to be able to run on the Switch, which a lot of games can't. So Steam is really your best bet. But again, like this, this Souls, like, I, I find it hard with the way they were arguing that, that PC is really, should have been the... the if if I'm following their argument logically, PC would have been the logical cut to make, in my opinion. Right. Especially since uh, now they might be doing PC because I think they're launching. I think they're an Unreal game, and I think it's launching on the Epic Store, which means that like they get uh, certain cutbacks on their things. But like it, it, it's it's all it's all ridiculous. Xbox covered it on their channel. They need to make sure that it's coming to Xbox. You know. And to MLD's point. Xbox may have rejected their uh, uh, an attempt at a Game Pass deal, right? Because it's it's there is a limited bucket of money for to get games on Game Pass every year, and maybe Xbox and them couldn't come to an agreement, and it could be that that's why they're canceling the game, which is a potential issue with with Game Pass in a way, right? That if developers can't get on it and xbox rejects the terms of them wanting to get on it they just won't come to the platform at all or later which is a little bit of a problem that that then that's a very hypothetical statement I, I have no proof of this but like you can see that that logically could happen that the game pass is really good for indie developers and can really help them and get them the exposure they need and the uh um the the distribution they need and the financial security but if they don't get it, the inverse could also be true, where they just won't come to the platform until they can. Um, and yeah, supposedly the game is just postponed and not outright canceled for Xbox, uh, which is which mm-hmm. is good. But like again, man, like but we don't know cover... when we don't know we don't when know that when. <laughs> um, and like that's that's the that's the kicker, right? Like. Mm-hmm. Xbox gamers right now feel like, in some ways, Microsoft doesn't necessarily have them at the front and center with the porting, or at least some do. Not all. I'm not. I don't want to lump all because I like. I'm not going to speak for everyone because like, I, I don't even necessarily totally feel that way. But like, so a, a lot of people are are down are are down on the brand, and so anything like this that happens is going to kind of, uh, like snowball. Like, what's the game? Is it Katamari with the big ball? Yeah. Or it keeps rolling. Yeah, it's it's kind of like a Katamari thing where like every little thing just is gonna get added to that ball, even if it's like not related, but it's just bad news. It, it, it's gonna kind of Katamari, which is why I said that back when we were talking about the the Xbox's announcement that I don't think their uh the the what they said about the porting was strong enough to overcome what people were upset about, and you can kind of see that right now where stuff is. Mostly tangential and unrelated stuff is catamarying with with everything that's going on, right? And that's that's just how people are. When 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 you feel bad about something, anything else that makes you feel bad kind of makes you feel exponentially worse. Even though the two together would only make you feel so bad. And that's something that they really need to really in June they need to get ahead of. At, like at, at the June showcase, they really need to show people why you want an Xbox console, and they really need to like they 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 really need to get back on the to to rebuild that kind of hype and excitement. Um, mm-hmm. because you're going to continue uh, until they do, you're going to continue to see things blown way out of proportion, even by relatively diehard Xbox fans, because it's all rolling in one ball of upset and disappointment together which isn't necessarily fair but it's how the human psyche works for the most part so 
it doesn't really matter that it's not fair. It's how humans are. So I, I do think that they have their work cut out for them in fixing player sentiment, even if this game doesn't really matter in the long run. Like, like a lot of these things don't really matter in the long run, but they keep compounding on top of each other. And Xbox really needs to get to a point where they can have victory after victory after victory so they can move away from the bad compounding and have the good compounding. That's why I've said that they need to be really consistent in things. And like we really need them to, like, when they say they're going to hit quarterly releases, they really need to keep not missing quarters. They need to have good news compounding after good news compounding after good news. Because that's how you break out of, the, uh, out of the bad news spiral. You make a good news spiral. And then the bad news can't all pile on top of each other, because the good news is the thing that's piling on top of each other. And I, I really think that this would not be an issue people would kind of have ignored this news if good news was compounding instead of bad news does that make sense you're never yeah. gonna have it what you'll never have good news what do you mean <laughs> the gaming the... media and their fucking shenanigans i i mean so here's the thing the other like oh i, I steam I, I... has bad news all the time but steam is able to compound its good news because it's compounded so much good news but, over so much but time ra but rage baiting doesn't work with stuff with steams rage baiting doesn't work with stuff with nintendo and i mean PlayStation. sure but sure if we can rate we can rage bait the community all day long every damn day of the week when we talk about Xbox, we saw PC Magazine once again decide to try to weaponize something out of a GDC conversation against Starfield. There is money involved when it comes to basically harping on Xbox. I, I think there's money involved in harping on everyone, but the no. reason it works so well on Xbox is Xbox nope. hasn't compounded Colin good Moriarty news. Colin Moriarty himself said that the gaming media is scared to talk bad about PlayStation. That came out of Sacred Symbol's mouth. I believe that. Oh, now it sinks in for you. Because that's how the gaming media is. PlayStation plays them to play nice, and they get paid by their advertising revenue for talking crap about those who don't play pay them to pay nice or play nice. I mean, and I would say just to just to uh, add to that. Uh, I mean, probably in a couple a year or two. I mean, a lot of these. <laughs> I don't know. I think we're seeing a, a spiraling downfall of some of these outlets. I think oh, you know, I know which that's ones. What gonna, that's what it's going to take. Yeah, that's what it's going to. That's what it's going to take is stuff like that is for these companies to i hate to say it like this but the only way it's going to happen for things to get better when it comes to gaming media places need to close and people need to lose their jobs sorry to be that blunt about it but there is people out there like season gamings level one gaming there is plenty of people out there to fill the gaps and to do a much better job than what we have right now when it comes to the gaming media mm -hmm. because at this point the gaming media has literally turned into uh, basically a political game we I mean, have if this was true nintendo doesn't like i've never heard anyone say that nintendo pays off people Nintendo has built up so much goodwill with gamers for so long that the bad things don't stick for more than a day. They got my childhood armor on. That's whatever. Why. That Correct. Too, but... Xbox but has dude... yet to be able to do anything dude... like that. But they're never going to get years. out. Dude, every time Microsoft makes a move, remember what they did with Internet Explorer? Dude, Internet Explorer hasn't existed in years. It stopped, re it stopped receiving support years ago. They're on Microsoft Edge. But you don't, every time we talk about Xbox, Microsoft, Internet Explorer gets brought up. Now People don't let it go. Come on, let's talk about Zune now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, that too, Zune, Windows Phone. And, and, and that's what I mean. Like, oh my God, Xbox, I mean, Microsoft canceled the Windows Phone and the Zune. But meanwhile, over on Sony, we've canceled the PS Vita. That's okay. Oh, look, they stopped production on the PSVR 2. Because why? There's too many units stockpiled that are unsold. I have been saying since the launch of the PSVR 2 that it's going to be a failure. 
and it's going to be a failure. I'm going to tell you right now, yep. don't buy them. They're going to try to liquidate them for the holiday season to be able to sell off the units that they have a surplus on. And probably about this time next year is when they're going to come out and say that they are going to stop the support for the PSVR 2. Mm -hmm. Again, console, I, I agree with that. Do well. I just like, don't think that they have had ever an instance where they have had as many snowballed failures except in the ps3 era and it took them forever to rebuild their brand trust they only no, it really didn't. did it, it in 2016 it two, no it didn't it took two guys standing on screen saying this is how we share our games on playstation <laughs> and he hands them a game well oh, remember that. remember best the, friends again remember what was it the 2011 or 12 hack as well like that they, yeah, no, they, they like, did lose it took they them did lose. years yeah. to rebuild that trust though no they did it they got yes, it, it back did. No. They didn't. They only started outselling the Xbox One in 2016 when they started releasing game after game after game after game, and then they snowballed ahead. I don't recall. I don't since, know. That. Since, I don't know. Since it was Johnny about D, well, our worldwide. D it was always his hand in front of the Xbox One at, instead of the, worldwide. It was always it was always the PlayStation head, but that has literally always been the case because Microsoft can't sell things outside of the United States and a little bit of Europe. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that but, the. the I just, but in the United no States, the Xbox in the United console. States, the Xbox One outsold the PlayStation Four for years until PlayStation actually released content. I mean, I would say Xbox was competitive, yes, in like North America. I know Canada. Yeah, I mean, it, it was very competitive well. for for a um, while, and but, then it wasn't. But yeah, it's it just always had um, the issue of outside of North America. Yeah, right. And so, like, Xbox One was doing pretty well in North America until. Sony blew them away with software for years. And, and like that's the problem, right? Is that them, Microsoft still hasn't software. Microsoft still hasn't stabilized the See, Xbox that's... brand since the Xbox One reveal. It has been over a decade and they have not stabilized the brand from that from from what happened with the Xbox One. But that's why I'm saying that's because of the gaming media spinning narratives and people wanting to hash out these ideas. What do you mean that 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 Sony started stabilizing software? You mean they crafted third third party third party over the shoulder? Yes, experience? that's exactly what they did. Basically, and they captured they, the public's eye yeah, very they, well. They, they, they opened up the cookie cutter mill. Meanwhile, freaking Xbox has been helping keeping real game development alive. The idea of being able to allow developers to have flexibility and craft the games they want, the game preview program, and allowing developers to be able to interact with the community in the development of a game. If we really want to talk about the grassroots, Microsoft has stayed true to the actual art form of game development, where Sony has literally tried to turn it into a cookie cutter company and somehow how it, it basically follow this formula to make money like and that's why I mean, all their games feel the same know, xbox has done a lot of good stuff but i feel like because it's xbox it, it falls on deaf ears like their bc oh, program yeah. the frame boost the the games that they've made this generation are so creative and so varied in genre like you, like flight simulator psychonauts like uh, uh pentiment grounded these are all vastly different games whereas the other guys they're just churning out remakes and remasters and third-person games and crickets. I agree I, with that sentiment. I, I, forget, I forget what guy said it. I, it the, this dude happens to be, I know, a prominent member of the gaming, the gaming actual industry. And he said that he can't believe how resistant people have been to the Xbox brand since its inception because they wanted the gaming world to stay like what they what he referred to as an Asian dominated industry. And that was the Nintendos and the the Playstations. Yeah, the and cool. and basically he saw he's like, we saw what happened when Sega disappeared from the hardware industry, the the hardware side of the industry. And it basically made it to where, you know, this is what you got, this is what you get. And then in comes Xbox. And that's where he was like, dude, the fact that Xbox exists creates a certain amount of competition and like he's like he still can't craft his mind around the fact that the gaming media would love more than anything a majority of the gaming media the st of the the big big gaming media the status quo would love for to put that headline out that xbox is no more and like that's where it, like that's a very scary world because you need competition you i mean need I, these i and agree with that Fundamentally, and that's where they 100%. should, be, and that's where they should be mm -hmm. honestly very 
equal in their criticisms. They can't play favoritism because they have a role in all this and making the conversation one-sided. Because the, like when you take a look at somebody who's fed information by the gaming media, they will probably still be under the impression that Xbox mm -hmm. has no games when absolutely Xbox has all the games in 2024 and PlayStation is practically releasing crap for 2024. And by the way, Colin Moriarty also said that he hopes PlayStation releases only one game a year at this point. And we're <laughs> still over here expecting Xbox to drop at least one every quarter. But oh, dude, Mr. Sacred Symbols himself. Oh, I really hope. Well, they listen, only I want find that guy to be a con. A so like, you know, <laughs> oh, thank, I don't uh, listen you, to him. At least. Uh, no, at least, no. <laughs> but, that, like, but that's the only thing. You can't go 10 feet without that dude coming up. But that's where I, I'm I, saying I don't listen to him. I'm glad you said it, and I didn't, but that's um, where... Oh, yeah, no, I'll, I'll absolutely say it. Uh, my my, my well, problem is that... the last time I said that... anything about a PlayStation guy, I had freaking, what was his name, David Jaffe knocking on my Twitter account, <laughs> calling me a bunch of bullshit. Um, <laughs> I remember that. I just... Sorry, go ahead, Crusader. See, at least him, he will he will fight to defend his name. Call him Moriarty. Um, I just, I, I sit here, and I'm, I'm like, maybe it's because... You know, I like the Xbox brand, and I hold them to the standard that they themselves set, and then don't hit, <laughs> um, which makes me really frustrated. Whereas I don't really care. I I I turn my PlayStation on to play like the exclusive games, and that's it. Mm -hmm. right? I don't care about that brand. And so like when I get flustered and get frustrated with them and and speak my mind, it's because I actually like this brand, yeah. and it makes me really mad when they miss the targets that they're telling me they're gonna hit. Well, and then they reiterate those targets and then they don't hit no and, I and then they reiterate those targets and then they don't hit and i hear you too, it gets Crusader. really tiring i hear you too man because like again like this like again the one game that we were discussing it's like i think it's a cool game i wouldn't mind trying it out i don't even care for the genre all that much but it's just like uh again there's something like funky going on here with the dev i'm just like damn you know xbox you know kind of showcased it a bit and had a few trailers and i was just like you know what's going on i you know i just it's just leaves me kind of curious what you know happening what's happening behind the scenes there yeah see my, my problem is like it just seems sometimes like xbox doesn't do themselves favors mm -hmm. right like th does, does that make sense that like some of these things like man if you're gonna cover a game on id at xbox i mean unless the game gets canceled out right you better be pretty sure it's gonna come mm -hmm. Well, like, you're not doing again, yourself a favor there. So, okay. so does that mean every time they advertise something, they got to have the lawyers sit down at the table and be like, look, we're going to advertise this game for you, and if you don't put it on our platform, we are going to sue the absolute <laughs> piss out of you? I mean, and I, I would argue... that's totally create some negative feelings from developers that are going to totally be like, well, then I don't, I don't want it to I don't think it that. needs to come to the platform if they cancel it outright. But if you're going to cancel specifically the Xbox version of the game, yeah, there probably I mean, should be something a little I'll contractual be, you know, there. Like, no, go ahead, that seems Oh, no, sorry. Bad. No, no, sorry. Just, like, I'll be just curious. Like, we'll probably... I wouldn't be surprised if we learned some more details, like, in the coming months. Because, obviously, this thing, like, is not coming to Xbox in the very near future anyways. But it, apparently it will at some point. But, um... Like, again, it's still very vague as to, you know, again, why, you know, especially like you said, uh, Crusader, because of like even like the way that what Sega had kind of uh, wrote things the, as well. Sega, Sega didn't say. Yeah, they, they, threw, on they, they, threw they, they were brought. Under the bus. Yeah, that's it. That's they it, threw yeah. Sega yeah. under the bus on this. Yeah. And that's where I'm kind of like, you know, with Erebon, it made sense because they split with the publisher and the publisher is mm -hmm. the one that had the agreement with Xbox and that kind of voids the the contractually right but like I, I have to imagine that xbox is going to look at their id at xbox um if they're putting trailers up on the thing and maybe put some some contracts down that says hey if we're going to actually put you up on here you need to come it needs to come at the same time as everywhere else because like if they can learn a like, lesson from this then that'd be good yeah because like, like that's some because like the the lawyers absolutely should be involved with anything like this because they're spending money to advertise the game and you're getting, it's the same equivalent of like, I mean, it's similar to platinum with the, the whole scale bound. Oh yeah. Where they, they ran with the money in this case, they ran with the advertising, mm -hmm. right? Like, 
they, they got their advertising from Xbox and then dipped and didn't actually put the thing on Xbox. Like, that, that's something I would absolutely say needs to be in the contract if you're going to get uh, coverage. Mm-hmm. Well, again, we'll see what, um, uh, like, again, what, uh, we'll probably learn some more information as time goes on, maybe through back channels, you never know. Um, anything else to add to this, Crusader, before I move to someone else? No, nah, no, nah, I'm done. All right. Uh, Grimes, I'll hit you up, then I'll go to Centurion, then Dots will round us off uh, for the final uh, commentary. Uh, Grimes, again, did you uh, see anything interesting from the future game show? And also, like, any thoughts on this uh, situation with Anatria? Grimes? Yes, no? All right. You're muted. Mm, maybe. Maybe. Uh, all right, uh, I'll move over to uh, Centurion. Centurion. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. sorry. But yeah, go go ahead. Go go. Oh no no some... sorry, no, Grimes. No, let, no let, let, like Grimes. Do you want to go? My, my, you yeah yeah. My, my apologies. Yeah, my apologies for being muted. Uh, yeah. It, uh, it's all right. People fall asleep to the sound of my voice all the time. I get it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. People uh, fall asleep on the and, show all the time. And the fu the funny thing is that I was actually talking, but I completely forgot that I was muted. So. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'll start with regarding uh, Enotria since it's a fresh topic. And I agree with everything you guys have said so far about it. Um, I, and like, to talk, uh, talking about the uh, European market with Xbox, I actually know more people playing on Xbox. Like, I have several friends in Belgium, uh, in Spain that play on Xbox. Uh, but obviously, for the majority, uh, for most of Europe, it's like it's like eighty percent PlayStation. We all know that, so I think that's definitely a major factor planning into their decision. Um, and this, and just like Crusader said, the studio actually came out and did say that the game is not cancelled. Uh, it's currently. Uh, suspended and that they will work on it eventually once the other versions are released. Um, I do understand it, but I don't agree with that decision and I think it will hurt them because I don't think... Uh, I, do, I just don't think that PlayStation is known as the console for indie games and I don't think their, their players play many indie games, so I just don't think that it's gonna uh, it's gonna uh, hurt them financially. And then that's when they're gonna come asking uh, Xbox for money. And I do agree with you about the lawyers. The lawyers need to look into that. Um, but regarding the uh, the show. Um, I didn't actually watch it live, so I caught the individual uh, trailers much later. But uh, credit to the uh, Future Game Show for putting spotlight on so many uh, small indie studios. Uh, one thing I do wish is that they would promote the show a bit more, get more eyes on on that because I. I don't think it was promote it was marketed or promoted that well. Uh, I looked at the uh, um, the full stream and it only, it had uh, less than fifty thousand views. So it's a shame. It's it's a, it's sad to see that it didn't get that many eyes. But moving on to the games, like many of you guys have mentioned, Flintlock. Uh, Plinlock, I, I love that game. It looks super interesting. No, no rest for the wicked. And I'm probably butchering this name, but uh, How T. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys saw that oh, game. Oh, is that the one with the ghost? It's like black and white. Yeah, it's like black, black and white, like with a a ghost looking uh, mm -hmm. character. Um, it's, uh, uh, what was it? 
Yeah, so that, that game looked super interesting. Uh, Dustborn also uh, looked uh, interesting, judging by the, the gameplay. Looks like a third-person Borderlands kind of game. Pro I'm probably completely wrong about that, but yeah, the art style looks borderline, Borderlands-like. Um, and with Flintlock, the first trailer didn't do it justice as people were comparing it to Assassin's Creed and uh, the, uh, the combat looked boring. But this new trailer does a much better job. So, uh, and yeah, I, uh, I, I'm definitely going to play it. it. It's coming to Game Pass. So, looking forward to that game. Um, no rest for the wicked. Yeah, that game, like you guys talked about, mentioned, looks so good. Um, I there's been some controversy in the past with the studio behind it. Um, so I, I, you know, I, I I'll probably play it, but I I don't support the things behind behind the studio. Um, and yeah, I, I forgot, I mean, I really wanted to talk about the, the game Houti, but I forgot what I was going to say. It just looks really cool. And uh, yeah, uh, probably Centurion can uh, talk now. <laughs> I mean, you did make some good points, like with the games. I guess definitely some interesting games that were showing off. Actually, just to add mine, my favorite picks before Scent yeah. takes over. Um, no rest for the wicked as well. Love, like again, the art style looks like again the gameplay looks fun. Um, still wakes the deep. I'm very interested in it. it comes from uh, the Amnesia team, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the Chinese room and Industria too. A little, a little uh, game. Uh, the first one is on Xbox. They did not list Xbox, though, um, but it is a small team, so I, I do kind of understand, but it is, I, I am, that did, did catch my eye. And uh, a game called Spine, which looked, uh, it was only like a CGI trailer, but it, oh, it was kind of action-y, and I, I kind of liked it. It looked kind of cool. Um, but yeah, Scent, take over. Uh, I know you made some a uh, couple of points earlier, but uh, yeah, did you uh, like any of the trailers from the future game show? And yeah, any more, like any thoughts on in, in Atria? I could kind of make this short and sweet. Um, <laughs> when it comes to Inatria, the developer, whatever the hell the game is really called, um, you know, to me, I obviously, I like how somebody said this could be a learning experience for Xbox. Um, but at the same time, I look at it like this can be a learning experience for the entire uh, gaming industry because I'm just going to, I'm going to put it this way right now. Um, in my job uh, where I work, I'm held to a standard where if I, if I make a promise or a commitment and that it's like public knowledge, then I would look like a real a-hole if I didn't come through with that. And that's where on this developer, in my opinion, this is the, if this is the bed that they want to make, that they, they, they can go ahead and lay in it. Um, for starters, you guys are completely, you essentially are backtracking on the consumers that were excited for your product that were going to be on the Xbox side. Uh, you have shown that you care more about money than you do about staying true to your word because this is obviously a, a money issue. And so, therefore, rather than trying to figure out a way to work around it or do what you got to do to stay true to your word, you're just going to be an even bigger a-hole and you're going to blame Sega because of your partnership with Sega and that you wanted to focus on the PlayStation and PC community because you feel that there, you'd be being able to serve the, the Sega Asia community a lot better. Um, and that's where I just don't really feel that it's a good look for the developer or for the gaming industry as a whole to let a developer just act like that. I really do think that maybe Sega should even come out and kind of put them in their place and be like, hey, 
it's not our fault that you guys couldn't develop the game right and now you're in this situation and we're not going to be your scapegoat um so that's that is that in a nutshell um to also put it out there quickly no i did not watch this uh show i do recognize some of the games on the list um invader has been aware of what's been going on in my world i've been kind of checked out for the past few days um and that's where um other than the big stories that kind of like scroll over my phone and stuff like that um i didn't watch this one but i like i said i do recognize at least one of the games on there like flintlock i'm really excited for that one um i'm gonna have to sit down and really kind of watch this one probably tonight tomorrow to kind of just familiarize myself with a lot of the games that are going to be coming to game pass um, but just looking at this list, I mean, it just goes to show that, you know, Game Pass is pretty much the, like, cause these are all games coming to Game Pass, right? I'm not, not like, all of them. No, not so all only of them. like two. I think all two or two? three. Yeah. So no, it's like Flintlock uh, was still wake. The deep is. Yeah. And Halibut Herald, it. I think as well. Yeah. Oh, that's Halibut cool. Herald. I, I, would, I think. I that, think. That's got me excited for Flintlock. See, that's the cool part is that one's in Game Pass. I'm excited about that one, but yeah. That I was announced in 2022, it. I think. But, yeah, it was a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. A lot of people tried to say it was like a rip off of God of War, but whatever. No. You know, no. It's it's got me excited. It, you know, whatever. <laughs> I think it's I always laughed we're like Xbox needs a game like God of War, third person over the shoulder with a throwing axe. Well, what about Flintlock? Oh, wait, 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 wait. That's too close. That's too close. <laughs> But no, um, definitely, uh, I will say, at least looking at the list real quick, Flintlock is the one I recognize, but yeah, I haven't been able to mm -hmm. keep up too much with what's been going on this week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, an understandable scent, and uh, I mean, really, we, we got a pretty big backlog as it is anyways. We always talk about the backlogs, <laughs> so uh, maybe maybe we don't need the, uh, <laughs> maybe I don't need to introduce you to any more games <laughs> right now anyways, but uh Hey, yeah, uh, there's some interesting titles there. For me, this month, this month isn't like ending for me at all either. Like mm -hmm. I've got, I've got South Park. Yeah. Uh, because that's got me interested in. But if we also like not to like go down a rabbit hole real quick, but it goes beyond games. I mean, I think this is going to be one of the bigger summers for entertainment in general when it comes to even the movies. Mm -hmm. Is we've got some pretty big movies coming out too. So I mean, I just feel like this summer it's going to be more like trying to balance your time and keeping up with everything that interests you just entertainment in general yeah my backlog's about to hit 200 games no so, I, <laughs> uh -huh. wow i thought i was the centurion bad. centurion did you see the uh new alien uh movie trailer i haven't seen that one um I, i'm mind blown oh, by dude too. i don't know if you guys know they're doing a, a beetlejuice 2 and they got michael yeah, yeah. to come back and do beetlejuice that looks for, and the cool part is they got the chick that played Wednesday Adams from Wednesday. You you mean like we know they're right there? Yeah, even if it's bad, oh, it'll be good. Yeah. Oh, uh, dude, yeah. <laughs> uh, so they they and then also we've got uh, like Ghostbusters just came out this weekend. We've got Godzilla versus Kong two next weekend. Uh, they're like, dude, if you go and actually read on what's coming out this summer in the movies alone. It, you, you, there's a lot of stuff that people are going to want to be spending their times going to go see this stuff. And then you just throw video games on top of it. And you're just try, like going like, how the hell am I going to have any I'm, kind of other time? I'm so happy that there aren't as many incredible video games coming out this year's last year. Well, like, is there still a lot? But it's not quite last year level. Yeah, it's, it's you know what uh, I mean. It's a little more spread like, out, at least this yeah, year. Yeah, because 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 if if we had the movie season this year that we had, you know, or that if we had if we had the games from last year with the movie season this year, Jesus Christ, the the movie season's gonna get even worse next year because during the uh, the 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 writers' strike, a lot of production was stopped. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and so this is some of the backlog from that. But a lot of production was pretty much like shelved for during that period of time. And that's where you're going to you're it's going to be happening like what happened last year with the pandemic, where the game where games were stacked on top of each other just because there was only 12 months in a year and people were fighting for space when to launch their game. 
And I think we're going to go through that maybe this year and next year for with movies and television shows because of the writer's strike. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, we're getting we're, we're, we're getting like the everything because like there's a lot of covid delays, too. So we're getting that on, on top of it yeah. with the movies, you know, that's right. Like, yeah. like we're getting we're getting everything stacked up. Mm -hmm. Well, that's kind of happening with games, too, right? Like. That's why last year was like that, because we had like two and a half years of games stacked on top of each other. It's kind of why this year's like it, too. Yeah, there's a lot. There is a lot of games this year. Uh, oh, boy. It's going to be interesting. Um, anything else to add, Scent? No, because I was taking us down a rabbit hole. It's all... <laughs> no, it's all good, my <laughs> friend. Fun rabbit hole. Uh, let's see. Dots. Dots, why don't you round us out here? Uh, again, do you have any thoughts on the future game show? And uh, definitely, you know, any thoughts on uh, Inatria? What's going on there? Um, on t In terms of the future game show, uh, really, only two things really poked out at me. One of them was uh, uh, Sandland, mostly uh, like uh, General said, with uh, Kira Toriyama passing. I think. Yep. Yep. Well, I think there's going to be a little bit more attention on that game, specific just because of his passing. Whether that's a good or a bad thing is, you know, up to whenever it when it releases uh, next month. Um, but I mean, otherwise, it, it it looks like a fun game. And then, like you said, I I, I looked at Spine. But even though what what was funny to me is watching the 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 pseudo gameplay trailer, but is like the the little like lightning bolts around the character's head whenever yeah. the, someone was attacking. Them. I was like, okay, so it's Spider Man. And then when I saw them shooting guns, I'm like, all right, it's the Red Hood DLC from Batman Arkham Knight. <laughs> so, but it, you know the 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 simple you know dodge mechanic you know beat him up brawler style arkham spider-man game is is it's it's still a good game style so there's potential on that but overall um yeah kind of going off of what grimes said i didn't really really even know much about the future game show it definitely did not get as much like you know hey this is something that you should watch uh that a lot of the other game shows were um throwing out there so a little, a little upsetting in that regard, but it is what it is. And then, uh, Anatria, I, I, I got nothing. I got nothing <laughs> on that. I, I have no idea anything about it. So, I, okay, I, I won't, I won't bloat the the podcast any further. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, dots. It's all good. Um, yeah, I mean, just to round out things, uh, for the group, for uh, myself, anyways. Like, Anatria, I think it's a cool-looking game. Um, it's just unfortunate, the situation. I will keep an eye on it, but again, I, I really hope it does make its way to Xbox uh, sometime, well, soon-ish, anyways. Um, but yeah, Future Game Show, again, I thought there were some pretty cool, uh, cool games nonetheless. Uh, not a huge show, but again, some really nice indies there. And uh, yeah, Still Wakes the Deep looks, looks pretty good to me. All right, all right. Uh, I think that about does it for this one, guys. Uh, just looking at the time. Look, fun chat as always, like surrounding games like Lightyear Frontier and Dragon's Dogma 2. We had really good chats about those ones, as well coverage of the future game show and, uh, you know, some uh, funny business there with Anatria. Shout out to everyone that joined us tonight. Uh, saw some wonderful people in the chat, and thank you for stopping by. If you enjoyed the show, then please consider dropping a like. And, of course, subbing to the channel, as we love to see the new faces here. Next, I'll go over to the outros, uh, starting off with Grimes. Grimes, hey, good stuff tonight, my friend. Where can everybody find you? Yeah, you can find me on uh, Twitter at FakeMayhemOG. And, uh, you know, good chat as always. Agreed. Agreed. Next up, Mr. Dots, Dots RTS. Good stuff tonight from you as well. Where can everybody find you? Yeah, no, uh, another great Sunday night. Uh, a little lighter tone than, than some of the previous weekends we had, which is great. Uh, happy, all happy about that. Um, but yeah, you can find me at Dots RTS both on Twitter and Xbox. And yeah, no, it's uh, it's uh, we're rounding out the first quarter, so you know we'll we'll see if it's an uphill or downhill battle. Indeed, indeed. 
Moving over to the general, General MLD. Hey, man, good stuff tonight from you as well. Where can uh, all these wonderful people find you? Yeah, you guys can find me at MLD Ghost on Twitter X and Gamertag Ghost MLD. Looking forward to the next one. All right. Moving over to Crusader. Crusader, hey, good stuff tonight. Some really wonderful points from you as well. Where can everybody find you at? Uh, you can find me at uh, Crusader3456 on most social media and gaming things. The only thing I don't add people on is Discord. Um, yeah, you can find me on Twitter being unhinged at the Star Wars community for being itself unhinged. Uh, that's going to be the next couple of my days. I guarantee that. So if you don't like Star Wars conversations, follow me after the next couple of days. <laughs> Good stuff. All right. So, sounds interesting. And who else do we got here? Centurion. Centurion, round us out for you. Where can everybody find you? Uh, well, uh, great conversation tonight, guys. For those interested, you can find me at Centurion1307 at uh, Xbox Live and Twitter. Uh, you can also find me at Centurion1307 on YouTube. Uh, it's been kind of silent there for a few weeks, but I plan to get back into it um, now that things have kind of settled down. Mm -hmm. Understandable. And uh, yeah, guys, you can uh, find my content on YouTube at Invader Gaming. Um, yeah, guys, I had a great time tonight, and I hope you all did as well. Uh, just a heads up there that there will be no show next Sunday on account of it being the Easter weekend. Uh, you know, lots of uh, family things going on, lots of running around. Um, yeah, it's, you know, just a busy weekend. But, um, yeah, we'll be back in force the following Sunday, so don't worry about that. I think that's uh, April 7th, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, everyone, take care. We will uh, see you on the next one. Later.